It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Today's show is sponsored by Macari. Okay, uh, Macari. You got stuff lying around you just don't use? I know I do. Okay, you need to check out Macari. It's the selling app that makes it fast and easy to sell almost anything. I'm actually about to upload a bunch of sneakers and shit to Macari. I'm not even joking. I got too much shit. Mm. Uh, you just take a few pics, add a description, and boom, your item is listed. The best part, everything ships. So there are never any awkward meetups. You can find Macari on the app stores or on Macari.com. That's Macari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I. Let's start the show. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And do you have church announcements, Andrew? I do have church announcements. Okay. Um, this weekend, thank you so much, Taylor. I love your hair. <laughs> happy Black History Month. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wish you happy Black History Month yet, but I love Close your hair. Close the door, hair. Taylor. Why don't open? Um, yeah, so, uh, special Black History Month shows this weekend in, in Pittsburgh. What? I can't have special Black History Month shows? <laughs> Charlamagne, can I have Black History Month shows? I, I booked them shit. prior, but I, I'm just saying. Technically, Are they in black dirt. comedy clubs? Say what? Where they at? Pittsburgh is that black? Uh, Wiz Khalifa's yeah, from there. Yeah, you got black. A lot of black people in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Miami. Yeah, it's and, black and uh, yellow. It's very diverse. Black and yellow, yes. dude. Yes. It's very what? Don't look at me like that, Taylor. <laughs> Holy shit! Black and yellow. In Pittsburgh, where at? Um. Pittsburgh Improv. Then we got Miami. I think these are sold out. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not exactly sure. There might be a few tickets left for Pittsburgh. And then um, go to theandrewschultz.com. We just added a bunch of shows. Uh, Tucson, Milwaukee, uh, Atlantic City, Reading, PA. A uh, bunch more continue to be added. Go there, theandrewschultz.com. Those are my church announcements. Um, today, so. today, what's today? Today, today will be, today will be Thursday. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Farmington, Michigan at this uh, beautiful what mental up, health gymnasium called Inception. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm doing a field trip. I'm taking 10 people to experience Inception. Inception is a place that I went um, last year, did the float therapy, did the brain training, did the Whoa. magnosphere. Like, I, I've never experienced stillness like I did when I was at Inception. You know, I've tried meditation and all of that shit like that, but that float therapy and that brain training is just something different. So I'm taking 10 people uh, with me today. And I'm taking them to Inception in Farmington, Michigan. So I'll be out there what for a few hours. What is float therapy? Oh, man. Float therapy is amazing. Your guy talks about it all the time. Rogan, float therapy is is basically just it's a big the tank. The float tank. Yeah, the float tank. It's the big float you tank. You did that? Yeah, I did that a few times. I've been to I did float therapy. I talked about it on Rogan when we went. I must have been peeing. Yeah. She, no, you was there. <laughs> but no, nah, float therapy break. is dope. Float therapy is like, you know, you, you lay in the water and at first you're going to feel jumpy because you're like, oh, shit. You know, but it's salt water. So once you just relax and know you can float, it it, it it's it's just incredible because yeah. you gonna float regardless because it's salt water. Right. But once you relax yourself and you just gotta let yourself go and let the water carry you, yo, I promise you, man. When that light finally came on after an hour, I was kind of scared because I was like, where the fuck did I go? Really? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, did you get anxious? Like, were you in your thoughts in an anxious way? At, in the beginning, and because, then shit because, settled. Yeah, and then yeah, once yeah, I just yeah. relaxed. Yeah. I, can't, I don't even know if you call that sleep. I don't know what it was. I just know when the light came on, it was immediate like, like, oh, shit. And it really feels like you just took your, your body, dumped yourself upside down, somebody opened up your head, and whatever was in there just all fucking came out. Are you going to put one in the basement? Um, You got a nice little basement. Why not put one down there? I don't know. Maybe in the new crib. Joe got some. A new crib? Yeah. Maybe Moving up again? Crib. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. It's okay. A it's, a, it's a contract here, baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? Where? Where? Which Jewish uh, neighborhood are I'm you gentrifying now? No, I'm definitely not telling nobody where I live. I, listen, I'm the king of not telling nobody where I live. I'm definitely not telling somebody now, especially after hearing uh, what happened to Pop, Pop Smoke this morning. Because that's rest in peace. I don't know. We'll get to that once we get to that segment. We're doing ah, se that's right. We're organized. We're doing segments now. Once again, you want to get a new house? Do segments, all right? I'm, okay. I'm down for, I'm down, listen, bro. I'm down for the segments, dog. I'm so that, down for it, dude. So, so that was church announcements. Um, all right. All jokes aside, you know, the, the podcast is moving on up this year. Uh, a lot of things are happening. Um, I don't want to say things are happening fast because they're not happening fast. There's no need for things to happen fast because nobody over here is, right. is hurting for any money. And No, we're good. We're, eh, 
You know, that when, 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 when you're doing fine, you don't have to make rash decisions. Listen, brash decisions or rash decisions, either one, you don't got to make them. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Me oh, neither. the word is brash. It's brash. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, I, I meant rash decisions, the kind that make you itch. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Because you. you're just so, you're fiending. You're just yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I need it. I need it's it. A drug. I need it. I it's gotta have it. Yeah, I gotta yeah. have it. You know what I mean? Uh, things ain't working right right now. I don't know where my next check coming from. And then I don't have those problems. That's a rash decision. You're right. God. Yes. You're right. You are yes. 100% right. So, uh, but we don't have either of those. No. We know. Right. So <laughs> life is good. Life is good. Thank you, God. New house is on the way. Thank you, God. Hey, man. You, you know what I mean? Got, Taylor got new hair. Hey, man. Hey. You know what I'm saying? And it don't look struggle either. Those are nice no, braids. Those shits are nice. Them shits took a few hours. Which? Yeah. Let me tell you about those Real, braids before tell, we yeah, get into one of our those, first Is that a segments. new segment? What? Taylor's hair? You know what? <laughs> Can we add a new well, <laughs> Taylor's hair segment? <laughs> the segment is called Positively Brilliant, right? Ah. So at first we're going to highlight some things that we think are positively brilliant. Then we're going to do another segment called What a Fucking Idiot. So it's all one segment. So we highlight this. two things, right? I love this. Taylor's brilliant. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Valentine's Day, I'm killing all of them. I'm kidding. The day before Valentine's Day, I'm killing her. I'm killing Mikhail. I'm like, oh, y'all single. I'm killing Sim. Y'all don't got y'all nails done. Done. Y'all don't got your hands dead. That's how I know y'all don't got nobody. Because mm. if you did, y'all would be getting ready because Friday's a big day. Friday Obviously. and Valentine's, you're going into the weekend. Duh. It was a whole Valentine's weekend, It was right? a perfect setup. None of them said nothing. Michaela about to cry. <laughs> Sim like, I don't give a fuck. I don't got nobody. I don't care about Valentine's. Valentine's is overrated. Taylor don't say nothing. I'll tell her it was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Taylor came in the next day. Uh. Fresh poetic justice Ooh. braids. Taylor already knew she had her hair appointment scheduled for the 13th and she was going to be sitting between some woman's legs for four or five hours and she got her shit done right. Wow. Came in on Valentine's Day like, ha, me and Bay got a vacation scheduled this weekend. You guys went on vacation? No. It could have been, though. Why? Um, what do you mean, why? Yeah, why could it have been a vacation? Because that uh, dick was out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... But anyways, oh. um, <laughs> no, we just got, you know, a hotel in the city, but we're going to go on vacation. We're going to the Virgin Islands. Boo. The reason I say she's brilliant, though, <laughs> is because- You heard her she, she got a hotel in the city? Yeah. That's dope. That's no, he's not. not. She's from nice. Philly, dog. He got a whole what? family. <laughs> he got a whole family. If you get a hotel in the city you live, you got a family you're cheating no, on. No, he just got a trash-ass apartment that they always fuck in. So he had to do something That's new. Nice. Good <laughs> point. That's all. <laughs> hey, good point. <laughs> Sherlock Charlo over here. been fucking in that apartment. The hotel had a nice jacuzzi and everything. Exactly. Did you soil that jacuzzi? Ew, yo. Other people got to go in that jacuzzi. Don't be fucking in all the jacuzzis, man. It's Valentine's it's a holiday weekend. You want to change the scenery? I get it. You know, Gosh. go get a hotel in the in the, in the um, city for the weekend. But I say Taylor's brilliant for that because she could have easily been like, "I'm getting my head done today." She was like, "Nope, <laughs> I'm gonna show and prove by actions and deeds, wow. not words and lip service." Because she knows she would have told me she was getting her head done today. I'd have said to her, "You had that shit planned anyway." No, I would have said, "You just did that because I teased you." Because there was somebody that we were teasing one oh, time. Smart. Stop, there was somebody stop. we was teasing one time, and all of a sudden. <laughs> They came in with some goddamn brains. <laughs> but I'm going to keep that to myself. All right? But Paige, <laughs> do you have anybody you want to salute for Positive Brilliant? Nah. I got one more. All right, go. This is what I actually wanted to salute. I was underprepared, man. I, Fuck. I, I'm sorry. I wanted to salute CNN Ooh. Uh, uh, for hiring Andrew Yang Ooh. to be a political commentator. He gonna have to talk about this coronavirus though, for real. Listen, no, no, no. We gonna need to have a whole conversation about I'm sure this. He, I'm sure he got thoughts on it. I'm sure he got thoughts Bro, on it. But I, I, I just think go. it makes it makes all the sense in the world because Andrew has a huge social media following. Uh, Yang Gang is very active during every debate. They used to make Andrew trend the debates he made, and people like his POV on things. You see him on talk shows like Bill Maher. He's really good. Um, I think it's a great decision also because he's pretty bipartisan. Pretty bipartisan. And that's a yeah. rare thing for CNN to do. Futuristic so I think it thinker. Gives very futuristic thinker. Yep. Got a lot of cool perspective. Yo, agreed. Great think, idea. Yes. Absolutely Great brilliant hire. for CNN to sign him. Yeah. Brilliant of him to sign. Tell me tell me about that. So you stay relevant. So you stay in the... You, I never heard of Andrew Yang before this. Yeah. So it's like, yo, take that stardom yeah. that you got from running for president. Yeah. Now you're a CNN commentator. Yeah. He got books and shit out. I'm sure his book sales will start going through the roof and... Who knows where it could go from Andrew Yang from here? Andrew Yang's the type of person that needs money, bro. Let's be for real. Yeah. Andrew Yang being president would be cool for Andrew, but Andrew needs that bread. Why? Because he can invent shit, because he can create shit. You Is know that what, what I mean? he does? I don't I honestly don't know what he does. Um, I know he's Asian. 
Does he? I'm, I'm, that's a good question. <laughs> See, I don't know if he does yeah, that. I've sat down with Andrew a bunch of times. I mean, he has a bunch of ideas when it comes Son, to. Be honest, bro. Artificial be intelligence. Honest. We and don't stuff know like that. what he does. He might nah, he's own in some laundry mats. What? Nah, he's in Silicon Valley. I think he owns laundry mats in Silicon Valley. He's a businessman. Hey, if them shit digital, that shit might be the wave. Yo. All the people that's in Silicon Valley Yo. working, they might need to walk up in the digital laundromat and get their shit You don't shit got washed. time to wash your own shit. <laughs> Come on, bro. Who knows? Like, I love it. I just think that was a genius move of mm. uh, CNN. That was positively brilliant. Man, I wish I had a good positive thing that I was... Oh, oh. Here's my positively brilliant. The way that the NBA changed the All-Star game. Boom. I thought that was positively brilliant. Yes. The, the fact that they turned the game in the fourth quarter into a pickup game... Yes. And when it's a pickup game, your competitive juices start flowing. Yeah. And the way there's this beautiful shot, LeBron James posted, a bunch of other people posted, but LeBron is at the top of the key and uh, Giannis is defending him. And in the background, you see Quavo, Offset, Two Chains, Offset, Cardi. Two Chains, yeah, like all, Cardi, all these people, right? They're into it. They're like hyped. Yeah. Got the phone out. Look at like. It looked like Rutgers Park. It looked like some like pickup, like, you know, when you see a good and one game, yep. and everybody's like, oh, how do they see? Yep. That's what it looked like. Yeah, that's, oh, that's like. actually a great comparison because I was thinking it's playoff basketball, but it's more dynamic than playoff basketball because playoff basketball, you're not standing up, you're mm -hmm. not half on the court. Mm -hmm. So there's a casualness to it. But I thought the way the NBA, and the way the NBA did it, for any of you guys who don't know, is essentially what they did is once you get to the fourth quarter, the team that's in the lead has to score 24 points and, and, the, shut, team, yeah. and the team that's not in the lead has to score whatever their difference between the team and the lead is. And 24. Yep, and they shut the clock off. And no clock, no which time, they, they stole from Ice Cube's The Big Three, by the way. Good. Yeah, they, they, they definitely took that from Ice Cube's The Big Three. Good, get that yeah. shit. But, like, it really created this great intensity, and, like, you saw the real alpha males coming out, Harden passing a ball every Harden chance he has. Harden playing fucking defense. Yo, did you hear what Jonas said? Jonas is so European and African. You know how, like, Europeans and Africans, like, they don't understand, like, how to, like, give you shit soft? Yeah. They just go... Hey, you are fat. You should lose weight. Yeah, you know that's just like the straight direct. So they asked Giannis. They were like, "What was your, um, what was your, what was your team strategy in the fourth quarter?" And they're like, uh, "Basically, whoever was Harden was guarding. We were going to target him because we thought that was the easiest way to score." Huh? He said he was borderline <laughs> autistic in the way that he said it. Like, now, if, if, if any of us said it, they'd be like, oh, they're just busting balls." He was a hundred percent serious. Look right at the corner. Yeah, he was the weakest defender, so we decided to target him. Well, Harden is the weakest defender. Well, you don't say it in an All Star game, bro. It's not the playoffs. Oh yeah, it was like I mean, but yeah, but he is the weakest defender. Yes, he is. Yeah, 100%. that's a fact. I mean, he wasn't totally wrong. No, he was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. think that you kind of tease and everybody's joking around during yeah, the All Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought that was positively brilliant. Hundred percent. I wonder when Harden gets called a weak defender, does that make him want to score seventy points <laughs> just to show you his <laughs> strength? You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't fucking defend, but watch but, this. Uh, yeah, Neither yeah. can you because I just scored seventy. I'll get these buckets back. Listen, so that we can transition right into what a fucking idiot. Um, I didn't have this on my what a fucking idiot list, but it made me think about it. Hmm. The judges of the slam dunk contest for NBA All Star little weekend. hometown, little hometown cooking. I'm gonna tell you what the NBA has to stop doing. Hmm. Stop letting non dunkers judge the dunk contest. It should be historically great dunkers. The Dr. J's, the Michael Jordans, the Dominique Wilkins, uh, Clyde Drexler's, people who have Vince Carter. Spud Webb. Spud Webb. People yeah. who have actually won slam dunk contests who understand the degree of difficulty of these dunks. Let them be the judges. I don't want to see no celebrities. I don't need no Chadwick Boseman. I don't need no motherfucking Common. God bless them. They're my guys, but I don't need them. I don't need no players like Dwayne Wade. I need dunkers. That's I want dunkers to be the judges of the slam dunk contest that's it end of story that's a good it idea. is idiotic to have anybody else out there judging slam dunk contests yeah because we're not watching it for the judges no like they think the judge brings some kind of like celebrity to the matter like nobody's going I wonder what number Dwayne Wade's gonna no. give no. they don't understand the degree of difficulty yo what the fuck does Eric Gordon have to do Aaron, Aaron, Gordon. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron he Aaron. jumped over somebody seven foot fucking five I think that that I don't trust those dunks why because the guy bends his head a little bit and you can push off of him Mm. So it's like when you're jumping over a fence. You can't jump over a fence, but if you put your hands on top of the fence. I don't know, bro. I think my leg will still get caught. You think? Yeah, man. I mean, because it's not like he's... Like, when you run up on oh, a no. fence... You can't jump over him. But I'm saying, when you run up on a fence, you got to grab yourself. Yeah, you can barely jump over a fire hydrant. I used to have a crazy vertical. <laughs> Wait, really? My vertical was like 67 inches. There's no way. I don't give a <laughs> fuck what you say. Now, is it one of those things like your dick in the summer? It's like 69 yes. inches. And then in the winter, it's like a 62. Listen, I used to have yeah. a 67 inch vertical leap, bro. 
How many feet is 67 no inches? There's no way. That's five feet seven inches, bro. I, I don't know what to tell you. I can jump over Spud Webb. What you want me to tell you? <laughs> I can clear Spud Webb. I clear Muggsy Bogues. I used to clear Muggsy Bogues, bro. No, you used to could not. I don't, I'm just, <laughs> there's no way in hell you can have a 67 inch. My calf muscles used to be so fucking Low key, big. can I be honest with you? I don't think you can touch the ceiling. Right now. With Tim's on. Easily. Hold on. Are you hold trying? <laughs> Not even trying. Not even trying. We might have to take it outside, bro. <laughs> Hold on. I might need a higher ceiling. This ceiling is recessed. It's different. I didn't realize how recessed the ceiling was going to be. That was pretty easy for him to touch the ceiling. But that's no 67 inches, bro. That's not 67 inches. I might be exaggerating. 64. There's no way you even have 60. You're barely 67 inches. I don't know what to tell you. I was a freak of nature. <laughs> that was serious. I don't know what to tell. What I actually had for uh, uh, absolutely idiotic. Yeah. Robert Lee Noyce. Uh, he was arrested for charges of harassment and false imprisonment after he kidnapped a white woman and forced her to watch Roots because he wanted to teach her about racism. Uh, let me tell you something. I don't know how or what uh, this white woman felt about black people before. Yeah. But I know if I had a shadow of a doubt, she absolutely hates niggers now. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> it is Black History Month. We can't be dropping the R on that Black just, History I'm Month. Just, I'm just telling you. Like, come on. If you didn't have a feeling about black people before, that might do it for you, right? Bro. Come on now. I think that you're going 100% I was right about these people. Like, it's like every time you see a, like a pride parade, like, you know, like, like if you see, if you go to the gay parade, right? Obviously okay. we want people to have parades, yes. but like if anybody going to the gay parade, mm -hmm. right? And before they went there, they were like, ah, gay people are flamboyant and extra and they want to party and dance. You're like, and ah, stop stereotyping. You stop stereotyping. And then you go to the parade, you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> When you write, you write, baby. When you write, you write. That's true, man. So, yeah, this is the wrong way. That being said, there is a way to get white women to come to your house to watch Roots or whatever movie you want. Okay, talk to me. It's called Tinder. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Alex has been very good at it. So, mm -hmm. you swipe. What is it? Right or left, Al? I, I don't know. I have a girlfriend, so I don't know about these oh, things. Yeah. I don't know how these dating apps work. You know Alex, what I'm saying? You still fucking off Tinder, Alex? Come on, Al. Al is out here. White women specialist. Really? Yeah, this guy's a white women specialist. For Black History Month, he what you doing? All women Fucking matter. white women. Alex <laughs> yelled out all women matter in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, okay, can I ask you a question? Talk to me. This is, this is the idiotic thing. People getting upset that Black History Month is the shortest month. People still mad about that? It's actually long this year because it's a leap year, so it's an extra day. Now, is that something that upsets you? No. <laughs> I never even looked at it like that. No. All right. It I don't upsets know. you, Taylor? Why? Why are you upset? Do you not? What? I'm just saying, like, black history in America has been fucking rough. Do you want to spend like a long month talking about that? <laughs> well, like, the, wouldn't no, you no, want no, to see, shrink what, that down well, to that's, like? That's, that's why this guy Robert is stupid too because it's like. Isn't that a good point? Like, hey, it's really. How much do we want to go over slavery? Like, well, no, it's more than that though, what, yeah. and that's the problem. What, are we going to talk about fucking peanut butter for the whole month? You no, know what I mean? It's that's like, the problem with guys like Robert Lee Noyes. Like, black people have you know been at the forefront of so many innovative things in this world and in this society. Right. So for you to sit down a white woman and say, "Watch Roots," because this is what. Uh, racism is all about. Like, yeah. No, racism is a lot broader than even just slavery. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Racism is kind of like kidnapping someone because of the color of their skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he kind of defeated the purpose. Also, his name is Robert <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is a plant. The story is This real. is a plant. It can't be real. <laughs> Robert E. Lee, the commander of the Confederate Ro Army in the Civil Robert War. Robert E. Noyes. There's no way. They got pictures of him, though. He 52 looks black. years old. Does he look black? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Remember, oh, I was talking about this? Hell, remember I was talking about the stereotypes of the gay property? <laughs> Whatever stereotypes you got of a black man, Robert fits them all. Okay. Bro, let's, I want to talk about I want to talk about this black history. Oh, okay. He got that, bro. He used to play football right, in high boom. school. So we're moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're moving on from our segment, Positively Brilliant. What a fucking idiot. And we're going into 
Shit you won't care about next week. All right. <laughs> it's a hot topic segment. Black dude. History Month. Let's <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> It'll probably be over next week. It is over next week. It would be an honest. It's fucked up. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Yes, it is. This is another thing that we need to understand. Oh, my Why God. Why you get so upset about this? Because black people just been like, Historically disenfranchised, and everybody goes, "Oh, it's a shorter month. It's not shorter. It's faster for f- the fastest people." They gave you the <laughs> fastest what? month. That Stop. doesn't make sense. Stop. The fastest month is February. Also, it's the the month that spelled the weirdest. You guys spelled your names the weirdest. You know what I mean? I don't think. I, I don't, feel I like don't, I don't think anybody <laughs> even put that much thought. This not. I'm thinking it makes perfect sense. I don't, I don't think nobody put that much thought into it. What do you mean? I actually think, I, think so the problem me? I have with Black History Month is that it's so much other shit in it that distracts you from Black History Month. You oh. just, every year, it's the Super Bowl. It's the Grammys. Exactly. It's Valentine's Day. I remember one the year Oscar Black Panther too, came yeah. out, which made a lot of sense, by the way. Yeah. Black Panther came out. The Oscars comes out. Yeah. Like, it's so much stuff that happens all throughout the month of February that you're like, eh. That's a good point. It should be a month and a half. You think it should be a month and a half? You want to go? Can wow, be man! All twelve months. Black history can be as long as you want, exactly. want it to be. But we don't get acknowledged by that. Who? Who you need to acknowledge you? Who? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Who? Like, like, who do you need to acknowledge <laughs> you? Saying, I want it to be a month where nothing happens to black people. Like we get like because even in that fashion designer that they tried to imitate like the monkeys, whatever like that. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who did that? Whoa, I don't know. Whoa. What's that? No, Montclair. H&M. That sounded like, oh, like two years ago. Montclair sounded like two years ago, too. No, no, no. It just recently happened. They're running it back? <laughs> yo, 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 son. Yo, 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 yeah, I know. It's a gorilla. What's wrong with that? Well, what was wrong when the other ones did it? Because it said, no, it was because H&M did Coolest Kid in the Jungle, and they had the black kid wearing the shirt. Oh. Yeah, in the ad. I mean, that? that's insane. Let me see. What is that? I don't know. I don't know what um, fashion thing this is. Uh, that's a little bit crazy. Yeah, it's just extra. Let's see. On, on February. <laughs> why? Well, this, this is New why York I hate New York Fashion, fashion Week, in week February. bro. New York Fashion Week is trash. Let me see it. Fuck, bro. Like, cause they they make you walk the runway in things that you would not wear out in public. What is fashionable about that? I don't know, but it looks like me a little. <laughs> Who the money? I'm just saying, what is fashionable about that? Like, what is fly a little about bit, that? It resembles me. And, I'm not gonna lie. People go to school to learn that kind of shit. Yeah. So no, I don't get it. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some of us are naturally gifted with this fashion shit. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I'm bring- out here, bro. Look at that. Army fatigues. You know what I'm saying? Bring it. You got a little A on your shit with a heart. I got the A on the heart from Valentine's Day. <laughs> hey. What kind of kicks are those? Hey, say what? what kind of kicks are those? These are the um the World War One ones. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> WW11, baby. He out here. Let me tell you something. I want to hear your opinion. Do you have the Wendy Williams joke? I want you to see the visual. Oh, wait, what happened? This is listen, we're doing a segment. It's things yeah. shit you won't care about next week. Hot topic segment. We just gonna run through a bunch of frivolous news. I week. love it. Yes. This is great. I love this. I love this. If they produce it right, it'll be great. That's true. You need to drop it. And... Can you? Yeah, play the, play the what clip. was you just doing? Carrie's ex fiance was tragically murdered Hold over on, the stop weekend. It. Let me set she... it up. Okay. Wendy, right? Yeah. Uh, was was mocking the death of Drew Carey's ex fiance. Drew Carey, Price is Right host. Yeah. His ex fiance got pushed off a balcony, I think it was, by another ex boyfriend in Hollywood Hills. Oh, that guy was on uh, Kill Tony. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. He was an inspiring comic. Yeah. And he was he did the Kill Tony show. What? Tony Hinchcliffe and uh, Brian Redman did this great show in L.A. at the Comedy Store. And he was one of the comics that had been on it in the past. The guy that yeah, dude, Drew Carey's ex-fiance. What, keep going. Keep going. Shouts to Kill Tony, though. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play it. This is Wendy Williams talking about it. Drew Carey's ex-fiance was tragically murdered over the weekend. She lived with a 
roommate, a girl roommate, and the roommate heard the screaming, the neighbors all around the neighborhood heard the scr- screaming, and they called 911. Once the cops got there, she was down there dead, on the ground, um, was pushed off of a third floor balcony. I'll give you a little backstory. She was killed not by Drew, but by, by the ex, come on down. And then she did her, then she did her head like this. And so yesterday on all day on Twitter it was hashtag cancel uh cancel Wendy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're a comic. Yeah. Uh we've talked about, you know, being able to make jokes out of anything. Yeah. What do you think? I think if Drew killed her, then it would have been a really good joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Drew didn't kill her. Yeah. But if Drew threw his girl off the balcony, yeah. And then was like, come on down. Yeah. <laughs> I could see why you would make the joke. I don't know if it would be a good joke, though. I mean, I don't know. Like, I just think it's weird that a woman, yeah. Wendy Williams, would yeah. make light of what essentially is domestic violence. Because she's been at the hand of it. Well, just, yeah, I mean, just the fact that a woman got killed by another man in that way. Yeah. Like, what was the point? Look, I <laughs> defend jokes, man. I, I'm yeah, always even when they don't come from comedians? Yeah, because I, I, at the end of the day, like, we just got to defend humor. I think that she's trying to do it. Now, this is one se- uh, second where I say, like, I kind of get it because she's making a joke about a hypothetical that didn't happen. She's like, Drew didn't do it. Yeah. Imagine Drew did it. Come on down. And then boom. Yeah, right? Yeah. But Drew didn't do it. So she's making a joke about something that did not happen. She's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. not making a joke about the dead because the dead didn't get dead like that. By the way, her audience? Yeah. Crickets. Yeah. I mean, nobody snickered. Nobody giggled. Yeah. Nobody was like, oh. It was just like, the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Wendy? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't funny enough. I'm trying to think if we could think of funny I don't think it was ways. funny. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not, not, I just think certain things you have to leave alone. If it's funny enough, it's funny enough. I, ugh, we nah. learned with the Kobe thing. Tony had that great joke about Kobe. But it wasn't about Kobe. Say what? It was about the fact that he died. It was, it was a, just a really funny spin on it. So sometimes there's funny around something. Yeah, and and and, and, and you know what's so good about that joke yeah. as well is when he said the joke. That is the reaction people had, right? People were like, "Damn, Kobe died." Nah, bro. Yeah, no, you're not upset. Kobe. Yeah. Not Kobe. So when you come with the Kobe passing, mm-hmm. never. Like, I guess what I'm saying is you can make a joke about something. You just got to find the right angle to do the joke. So that one was just yeah, a murder. Being, yeah, the murder ain't it though. I mean, dude, you know how many OJ jokes? Not about Nicole, though. Yeah. Really? Dude, of nah, course. I know OJ caught a lot of jokes, but I don't, never, I don't remember too many jokes about Nicole. It was OJ that used to catch the jokes. Yeah, but... And I they think... would make jokes about, like, you know... What? OJ cutting the cheese. Or, you know what I mean? Stupid shit like that. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't know. I was just thinking... Matter of fact, let me Google. Hold on. <laughs> let me Google. <laughs> hold on. Dude, hold on, tons hold on, of hold on, OJ hold on, jokes, bro. Hold on, hold on. Let me Google. Let me 100%. Google. It gets tricky. Google. But I always tend to... Def- to to defend jokes because people are going to be offended by Even something. Even by non-comedians? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do it, man. I, I Because I, I think the joke is worth defending. The idea that you should be able to make a joke is worth defending. It's not like it's not like comedians sign up for the army or something like that and like we're here to protect the country. Like at the end of the day, we're just like anybody else making jokes. So This is a good O.J. Simpson joke, but yeah. it's not about the murder. Okay, go. What is it? Do you know what the L.A. Rams and the Los Angeles... Police department have in common? What's that? Neither are very effective against the run. That's a good, that's a good, that's, that's cool. It's a, it's, it's around it. Right. You right. know what I mean? Right, right, right. Let me see the thing, man. I mean, these are like, like street jokes we're talking about. Like, I'm sure. Oh, this is actually a good article that came out back in 94 mm-hmm. about comedians making OJ Simpson jokes and about the dark humor surrounding them. And it's comedians defending why they decided to make OJ Simpson jokes. There's right. one, one dude says, I don't feel bad. Simpson's a millionaire. Anyone in the spotlight is fair game. Right. I think it, it, he's saying we're making jokes about OJ. But it's people a, made jokes man, about the fucking. Corny. I'm glad comedy has evolved. You heard, about, you heard about OJ Simpson's alibi? The night of the murders, he was waiting to be served at Denny's? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Neither. I don't get it. I don't get it. Another comedian said, we joke about Simpson because we don't want it to be true. Yeah, I think there's something about that, you know? I mean, you know me. I, I defend the joke or the right to make the joke because 
in order for a joke to like get funny, it has to start off in an unfunny place. I heard that Hertz just renewed OJ's contract. Only now he's making license plates for him. Hey, man, I don't know, man. It's like one line. <laughs> I'm glad man. comedy is the football. I'm trying to 94. think if I had a good OJ bit back in the day. What I have? Something. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> You didn't have anything back in the day when it came out? I mean, you were doing radio. You must have, like, spoken about I don't know I wasn't it. doing no fucking radio in 94, Andrew. How old do you think I am? <laughs> 63 or something? I don't know. How old are you, bro? I, I didn't start doing radio until 99. Really? Yeah. I started off as an intern in 98, and I got on the air in Yo, in I'm 99. tripping, bro. I didn't realize how long ago OJ was, man. I remember the 94? decision. Do you remember the decision? LeBron? Nah. What? The court just... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't fucking tell me that when you think the decision, you don't think LeBron James you're going right, to Miami, you're bro. Right, you're right. taking my goddamn talents to South Beach. That we never thought about O.J. Simpson in the decision. Now you're right, but I'm talking about the court... The acquittal. The acquittal, yes. If the yes. gloves don't fit, you must acquit. Bro, I remember they brought us in elementary school to the auditorium, the entire school, and they told us the decision... I remember I was in... Really? I was, I don't know, between kindergarten and sixth grade, right? Was that during Black History Month? Probably. (laughs) It was probably during Mm. Black History Month. And um, they put all the black kids outside, I remember that. And uh, they did not do that. Just joking. Um, They brought us into the auditorium, and they said, uh, we just want to let you know that OJ has been acquitted. He is not guilty. It was in October. And... We're all kids. We have no clue what the fuck is really going on. Mm-hmm. The entire auditorium erupts with applause. Why? I do not know. I don't remember any of that. Like when I so, watched the OJ 30 for 30, I don't remember that around. Bro, can OJ I tell you Simpson. how big this was for anybody listening right now? You know who I was for Halloween one year? OJ Simpson. Judge Ito. <laughs> who the fuck is that? That was Ito? the fucking Asian judge who wow. presided on the case. You've That's been how offensive, big bro. this. You've been fucking problematic, bro. Son. You've been culturally appropriating this shit, bro. You should be ashamed of yourself. Why? Bro. How? What did the costume look like, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all really want to know? Are son? there any pictures of this anywhere? Honestly, I just put on my Taekwondo outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> they're like, they're like, who are you? I was like, I'm Judge Edo, <laughs> off duty Judge Edo. No, I bought a mask. I bought an Edo mask. He had to have mask. Yeah. He was that big? Son, it, this I was don't remember Judge Edo, bro. Massive, bro. I remember Johnny Cochran. I remember Robert Kardashian. I remember the fucking... I never remember the, Kardashian. The, the, the guy who wanted to bury OJ. What was his name? He was a cop. Oh, yeah, the racist cop. I can't remember his name right now. They had the racist cop. And then I remember uh, his boy, Cato, something Cato. Remember boy. OJ's boy? He was living in his uh, boathouse or some shit. The one they said was driving? Nah, white guy. Mark, Mark Furman, yeah. yeah, Mark Furman, Mark Furman, Mark but Furman. Calvin Cato or something like that. I don't know. Tell us what the costume was, Andrew. I had a judge <laughs> robe, okay, and then I had a Asian guy's head mask. It was a Judge Ito mask. I bought it at the store, Judge Ito. That's that's not it, but something essentially like that. Oh, he really did that mask. Yeah, that's it not was called, called Judge Ito. That's not called appropriation. If they're selling the mask of a person and you wear the mask, that's yeah. fair game. They were selling them. They were selling a mask. I didn't just buy an Asian person's head. Why and would put they it sell on. Judge Ito for Halloween? OJ is the scary one. That's who the fuck you dress up as if you want to fucking scare some <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, you're right. What the fuck? You're right. <laughs> Why would you dress up as Judge Ito? It was a different time, man. Back then you could do this shit. Yeah, My parents yeah, bought yeah. it for me. They never thought anything about it. So you thought Judge Ito was a hero? I didn't know what I thought. I just thought he was part of the case and I was like, I'd be funny. And he's the guy that essentially let OJ off. Son. Yo, why Judge Ito don't get more smoke? Why should he? I'm just saying. The jury let him off. I know. But yeah, 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 you're right. Right? He's just there to preside over the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder how those jurors feel. Has anybody ever talked to any of the jurors from the O.J. Simpson trial? O.J. hasn't killed since. (laughs) Which is good. You know, like if you're like a serial killer, like you needed to do it. That's a good O.J. Simpson joke. You heard O.J.'s doing stand-up now, right? (laughs) He's killing. He killed. <laughs> Yo, I hate showing his stand up voice. Anytime you go into a bit, you use this stand up voice. So, you know, you like turn into Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, is it? my favorite comedians are the ones that talk like that because they bomb every time. 
Because you, because people can just hear the setup coming. You know what I'm saying? You just hear the setup coming, and it's like, yeah. I don't know what you're about to say, yeah, but I promise yeah. you, that, oh, that Angela, I didn't know deliver. you did stand up. Oh. Yo, so, do we need to go back to the what a fucking idiot segment. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to go back? <laughs> Jesus Christ, son, man. Angelo got a video on YouTube right that now. That shit is horrible. That I shit killed me, that bro. Shit to Andrew, Andrew said, "Yo, stop, man, please." So, that shit this. killed me because the 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 confidence was like too much. <laughs> Too he, much. He, it was too much. He walked on stage, started talking to girls. Yeah, you like dick or something like that. Just right into it. It was wild, bro. His first. Yeah, I gotta change the title. How did I do stand up? <laughs> his his first shit was I'm bi. Racial. Like, no, you did it. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Boo! Get him the fuck off the stage. I'm, I'm already fucking offended. I don't hear this stupid shit. <laughs> that was his first joke out the gate. You didn't watch it? That was the I first joke. I told you it was making shit. me uncomfortable. I was just, I scrubbed through a little bit of it because he has like a big old intro. Bro, he twerks at the end. Yeah. No! Bro. Yeah, you missed it. Bro. Listen, he got so desperate. Up, so let me he got so shit. desperate that he realized it was time to fuck some stools, but he didn't have a stool. So, so just he just twerk? started popping that ass, bro. Oh my god, <laughs> Angelo, right. have you quit? I don't do it no more. Why? Oh man, you got to get back out there. All right, shit, shit, yeah. shit, you won't care about next week. Uh, mm. Lizzo calls out men who judge women's bodies. This thing is so weird with Lizzo, bro, because she got to know she's unhealthy. Is there audio? Let me read what you said. Uh, she was, uh, yes, she was on a Brazilian TV show. And she says, I think that women are always going to be criticized for existing in their bodies. And I don't think I'm any different than any of the other great women who've come before me that had to literally be politicized just to be sexual. You know what I mean? Just to exist. There has to be audio of this. If you find a tail, insert it. Uh, Lizzo then went on to talk about how women before her were criticized for their body flaws. And because they fought against how people viewed them, she's able to exist and be comfortable in her own skin. Turning the conversation to male double standards, Lizzo advised men to get it together. We don't talk about your dick sizes, do we? Like, that's not a conventional dick size. It's too small. We still let y'all asses run all over the goddamn place. You don't talk about our dick sizes? You don't talk about our dick sizes? We don't talk about your pussy sizes. That's the, the reality. What? We never talk about how much volume you got in your pussy. Right? You talk about how many inches our dicks are, how fat, girth, all that kind of stuff. None of us talk about the space that you got in your pussies. <laughs> that is true. Right? People don't get complimented for having shallow vaginas. And we, they should. And they should. Or tight with vaginas, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah. you girls got no clue how much room you yeah. got in there. <laughs> I'll tell you the main And if it doesn't get filled, it's our fault. Well, I, maybe you got a bucket. I'll tell, yeah. tell you the problem with Lizzo's comments. And this is why, uh, you know. There's a lot of bucket ass women out here that are talking shit about little dicks. <laughs> you know why we don't talk about the buckets, though? Why? Because we feel inferior. Yeah, we don't I know fucked a bucket once. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bro, I fucked a bucket. We don't know if it's us. Is bro. This, is, this a bu is this bucket too big? Or, or am I too my small? goddamn handle too little? Bro. You know what I'm saying? I fucked a bucket one time. <laughs> I fucked a bucket, bro. Wait, no, you about to tell a joke. I, just... I fucked a bucket one time. Son. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I fucked what's, a bucket one time. What's the deal with fucking buckets? <laughs> <laughs> you put your dick in, and it's like, what's all this room going on in here? I fucked a bucket one time, and guess what? I realized I wasn't alone in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hit that twerk! Hit that oh. twerk! Save that joke! Save that joke! Son, I fucked the bucket one time, bro. I was I was a young man. I was in Austin, Texas, a young man. What happened? I put my dick in, and the bucket was weird. It wasn't a, bu a bucket. It was kind of like a vase, or like really? a vase for flowers, because the, the entrance was tight. And then when you went in, it, it footballed. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And it was yeah, like yeah. an air pocket or something was in there. And I remember I, I put my dick in. And then I remember I was just kind of windshield wiper in it on the inside. Yeah, it's like a room in Willy Wonka's house. Uh -huh. The door looks super small. But if you go in. Once you get in. Look at Whoa. this big old world. Seriously. Yeah. I thought that she must have had like a, a recent abortion or something. I just thought there was room in there yeah, that yeah, she yeah. just was made yeah. because it was distinctly big. Yeah. It was distinctly like big. Like something four pounds, three ounces was in there before you got there. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah, least. Yeah, 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 You know, yeah. so I had that bucket experience. Wow. And I just had to, to just focus on the rim. Mm-hmm. 
Because that was the tightest part. Wait. <laughs> I just kind of like boop, 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 boop. You got to give her a compliment then. What? You got to say, yo, the same way a girl would compliment a guy. Like, yo, you got a big old pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> if a girl was fucking what? you, a girl would be like, damn, you got a big old dick. Yeah. So when you're getting them bucket vaginas, yeah. give her that compliment. Yeah. Let's see if she takes it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody told you you had a big old vagina. Wouldn't you like that? Hell no. Well, you wouldn't like it for I was like, I'm not gonna give you back shots. I'm gonna give you buck shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so listen, if a, so if a guy compliments you and tells you, Taylor, look, you got a big old vagina, mm -hmm. you immediately regret letting state property run a train. <laughs> Yo, do not stop like, saying that rumor. Big <laughs> vagina <laughs> is an insult. Do y'all know what big what? dicks are, though? What? What to, don't, don't insult me. <laughs> Wait a minute. What'd you just ask? <laughs> Do we know, know what big dicks, dicks are? are? I know what big yes. dicks are. We've okay. seen porn. We got porn hubs yeah. like everybody else. But I'm saying, like, do y'all know what a good sized dick is? Yes, we do. Mine. A little bit smaller than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Seven inches, three fourths, eight when it's warm out, two and a half inches but of like, girth is a nice size dick. Thing too, curve, like all see? that stuff. Nah, how that much you, see how they objectify us, yo? <laughs> see how they treat us what, like we're just a piece of meat in our bodies? Yes, that is. It's a lie that women don't talk about dick sizes. That, that's number one. Open that was up wrong one of your fucking comments. magazines. It's just all dicks. That's yeah. all you're worried about is dick size. We're just telling Lizzo you're going to lose a toe. That's all we're trying to tell her. You're going to lose a foot if you keep eating that way. This is not something to be proud of. It's unhealthy. That's different than shaming a woman for her body. We're shaming you into health. Now, I will tell you uh, w where Lizzo's comments were a bit misguided. Okay. Right? She said we don't talk about your dick sizes, which isn't true. Women do talk about men's dick sizes. But the difference between a man's dick size and somebody's body weight, mm. yeah, it's two different things. we see it all the time. We see some, somebody's body's weight is visible to the naked eye. Yes. Unless you got x-ray vision, you're not walking around looking at men's dicks all day. That's so that's why people are so quick to comment on other people's body weight because we see it. It's visible. Yeah. If we were walking around with our dicks out, trust me, we would get... Dick shamed all, all the, time. the time. You know what I mean? That's probably why we invented pants. Think about all those fucking. Because y'all were dick shaming us. Those when little we were soft. You know those little pygmies you see on like National Geographic and shit. Yeah. And they be walking around in their tribe and they be don't be having no pants on. They be having them little dicks. Little dicks. You shame the fuck out of them. They bro. are. Come they on, are man. doing that. Come on. And they don't say nothing about the saggy ass tits that the pygmy women got. <laughs> Flat ass tits. That shit don't matter in their don't culture. Don't matter in their culture. Yeah. Tits hanging all down. Right. You're looking at me like I, I will say though <laughs> what you gotta stop being so hard on Lizzo yes and the reason you gotta stop being so hard on Lizzo is because Lizzo will learn in time what everybody else learns in time eventually you gotta get you gotta get off. it right yeah, it happens to every it happens to everybody <clears throat> is, it, is it fair to say that we're not being hard on Lizzo because she's fat we're being hard on Lizzo because she's misleading a generation of people who will think it's okay to be it's overweight. not Lizzo it's, not it's society Society is doing that. And she is a she's focal the, For point. whatever reason, she's the poster girl for all things fat, which I don't think is fair either. Uh-huh. But she's the poster girl for all things fat. So people always come at her as if she's out there pushing this narrative. But she's walking around her fucking thong out in the Lakers game. Like, she's leaning into this. She's embracing herself. She's embracing though. what she is. Yeah, but like, what if somebody was like, um, I'm embracing my cancer. I mean, she could do that. I mean, you kind of got to, though, right? Yeah. No, people it, fight. No. Fight that shit. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. But it is people. Yeah, because damn. Because no, right. her obesity is going to yeah. kill her at a much younger age, right? Her obese, And then and also all the other people who are like, I got to embrace my body, too. Now all them yeah. are going to die as well. So if you just, and if you look at obesity like a disease, which some people do, or an addiction, let's say food is an addiction, right? Yeah. If you look at like an addiction, people, I'm embracing my alcoholism. I'm embracing my crack addiction. I'm embracing, like, why is it this one addiction where you could be proud of it? You can't yeah. be a proud crackhead. You can't be a proud alcoholic. You can't be a proud heroin addict. I mean, none of us are doctors. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. eventually, you know, your doctor is going to tell you, you probably need to get some of that weight up off. And you know what I'm saying? She's but, gonna, but, cause she's rich. Yes, but she, but she, she, she will, she will get there in her time. So, and the beautiful, the beauty about a, a person like Lizzo, Lizzo is going to be Lizzo regardless of what size she is. You could tell. That's 100%. just who she is. She's a confident person. She don't give zero fucks. Mm. It don't matter if Lizzo weighs 140 pounds or 340 pounds. Facts. Lizzo is going to be Lizzo. Hey, listen. 100%. I love the song. I sing the song. It makes me feel confident. I don't know. Oh, I do know one song. Damn, what was the other one? What's the other one? <laughs> I wear my head down, back and forth. That's Lizzo, right? Yeah. Yo, she's fire. 
Music is dope. I guess what I'm trying to say is she's in a situation where at any point in time if she wants to lose weight, she can hire a physical trainer. She can hire a, a dietitian. Who said she's not now? I'm just saying she can do all these things, but the people that she's speaking to that are going, you know what, I'm going to embrace all this kind of stuff. A lot of them can't. So now when she's ready to lose weight because she got to, that shit comes right off. Yeah. And the people that can't lose weight just like that because they're in a shitty situation. They got two jobs. They got to eat fast food because they don't have access to the good food. Like yeah. all of a sudden they're in the situation like, whoa, whoa, I thought we were being fat together. What happened? Like, That's yeah. happened to Monique. What happened to Monique? Monique was what Lizzo's doing now. Uh -huh. And now she lost weight and people were kind of mad at Monique because like, you're supposed but to be But Monique had to do it for health reasons, just you're like right. everybody else will. Like, listen, man, obesity is a epidemic in this country. We all know it. There's no need to act like it's not. And eventually your doctor is going to tell you, look, you need to lose some weight. That's it. That's really what it boils and down to. And we're going to still love the music. We're going to still love the personality. I have no clue what she looked like before I heard the song. I yeah. found out who she was later. I just love the fucking song. Because it's a great song. So keep on making great music and you know take care of yourself or don't take care of yourself you don't owe it to anybody but don't act like you're the pinnacle of health or it's okay yeah we're, we're doing shit you won't care about next week it's just a hot topic segment where we run through all the frivolous news of the week i want to stay on this lizzo for a minute because there's a lot of people who say things you know they ask the question should men comment on women's bodies right and american society has kind of created that system where men are always talking about women's bodies and vice versa. Like, this is the home of beauty pageants. Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss America, yeah. Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, Ebony Jet uh, Jet Beauty of the Week. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it was, it was, it's always a thing yes. where we're commenting on a woman's body or even women are always commenting on men's bodies. D'Angelo did a whole video butt-ass naked Ooh. with a six-pack. He didn't do that because he didn't want y'all to comment on his body. That's you know what I'm saying? Point. So it's just like... I That's guess a in a lot of cases, you got to take the good with the bad, right? So if somebody sees a body they love, mm. like a J-Lo or a Trina, whoever it is, they commenting on it. If you see a Michael B. Jordan or D'Angelo back in the day, you comment on it. Yep. But if you see something you don't like, eh. And it goes both ways for men and women. It's not like guys don't get shamed for having the big-ass stomachs and looking nasty and yeah. fucking shit. You know what I mean? That's why you see a lot of guys getting in shape. It's guys right now that clown the old Gucci man. I mean, it's girls that clown the old Gucci man because yeah. of how he used to look. But Gucci looked at himself and was like, that's not what I want to be. I want to get in shape. So I don't, I think that's just kind of the American way to judge people by their bodies. I think it's a human way. I think it's a human way. Yeah. I think that we sexualize things that we want to have sex with. That's just natural. And, and I think maybe women do it in a little bit different way because they can sexualize certain parts of the body that maybe we don't care as much about. Yeah. But, you know, women are very um, picky when it comes to height. You know, like they're women will just straight up say on their dating profile, nobody under five six. <laughs> Michaela, Michaela is five eleven, mm -hmm. and we'll say that all day long. I don't short, I don't date no short men. And if we were like, yo, no girls with no titties, now you're being a you're, fucking, you're objectifying you're her, objectifying, or you're being exactly. a chauvinistic. Exactly, uh, there's a double standard. Yeah, it's there's a double standard. But the standard. reality is, we do have standards. Yeah, right. And standards are actually okay because they're baked into our DNA for like you know, thousands of years of evolution. Like yeah. we like certain things. We like um, nice, I guess, nice skin or like uh, supple breasts. All these things represent, I think when a, a woman is ready to produce children, I think fertility, right? So all these things mm -hmm. are, they're not like, Hey, I'm a shallow guy. Even that is a judgment of a woman's body. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you see a woman, you're like, oh, she's got subtle. Sup? What'd you say? Supple. So I'm about to say subtle. Quiet titties. She got, she got, quiet. <laughs> she got quiet titties. <laughs> she's got supple breasts. So, but you back in the day, you probably looked at her for fertility reasons, like, 100%. oh, she's ready to mate or whatever it is. You that, know what I mean? Hundred percent. That's judging a woman's she body. She is ready. Yeah. 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 Fucking slave masters used to judge. <laughs> People's bodies. I don't talk about that on Black History Month. Okay. <laughs> Charlamagne, please. Charlamagne, please. I mean, come on. This is, what, are we doing? what are we doing here? I'm you know just saying, I mean? it's kind of, it's just weird, Dude, man. Like, it is, this This is interesting. I was in, um, I was in uh, Hawaii, which is this fucking amazing place. Everybody should go to Hawaii. Outside of like the natural beauty, the culture is super unique and interesting. And, um, but they were talking about the, uh, the, the sugar cane plantations out mm -hmm. there. And, there's these documents that you can read where they're looking at the type of people that they want to bring in to work the fields and they're going through the different countries and seeing how they would work and wouldn't work with the fields. For example, they brought the Irish in. The Irish can't take the heat. They're too tall to bend down and do the whatever. Um, black, black 
uh, people. Ah, they can they can take the heat, but um, they're too tall to go down and be picking up the cane, so they don't work as well. And then the Filipinos, ah, perfect height, they're shorter leg. Da, da, da. Yeah. They they made it a science judging people's bodies by judging people's bodies. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, literally yeah, like yeah, the yeah, NFL yeah. combine or like the uh, NBA. Yeah, they, they had the exact same look at it. What is the most efficient group of people yeah. that we can bring in here to get that job done? Let's be honest. The only reason we don't like when somebody judges somebody's body is when they're saying something negative. 100%. Because if they're telling you how fly you look and how beautiful you are, you got fat ass, man. You got nice breasts. Mm. Like, I, 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 in the morning... These young ladies, Taylor, Sim, they walk in. Oh, look at fat. Oh, you got a fat ass, fat ass. I'm like, they do that. So it's. But you're still judging each other's bodies. No, you know what? This is not fair because um, Sim and. What's the other girl's name? Michaela. Sim and Michaela both like pussy. No, not Sim. Sim. Oh, so Michaela. <laughs> my bad. Label me a lesbian. <laughs> my bad. My bad, Sam. But Michaela likes pussy. So if Michaela's like, you got fat ass, she means it. Ooh. That's sexual harassment. Ooh. That's sexual harassment. Because if you would sexualize, if you sexualize someone, that's sexual harassment. It's like, that's no, a good point. And anything that you find sexual about someone else, don't you think that we should equate this? Anything you find sexual about someone else that you're sexually attracted can count as sexual harassment. For example, if a girl goes up to you, if a girl values uh, financial success mm -hmm. and she goes up to you, she goes, okay, Charlotte, I see that watch you got on. That's a nice little Rolex. You are sexually harassed in that moment because she sexualizes <laughs> your financial security. Sexually? Really? It turns a girl on, a guy that can buy a watch <laughs> like that. Financial security. <laughs> I'm, hey, there's a point here. Is there not a little bit? Bro, I love the brilliant idiot hot take. It's why we the brilliant idiots, That's baby. That's why we the brilliant idiots, all right? You know what I'm saying? Whipping dicks out. Where the bucket's at? I'm trying to fill one. <laughs> and if the bucket don't work, I'm going to stick my fist in it with the rolling attached there to we it. Go. That's what turns her on anyway. Let's go. <laughs> you tell me what time it is. <laughs> No, all I'm simply saying is the judging of people's bodies has been going on before us and it's going to go on way after us. Yes. That's just the way it is. And, and I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not just saying, saying it's a bad thing. It's just a thing. So to say should a man comment on a woman's body? I don't know. I really don't have an answer. I just know that's the way things are because women do it to men. Men do it to women. Men do it to other men. I learned from women you know how women be saying oh you got a fat ass to each other and big teeth that's why i objectify men so how you do it to men i do it all the time what do you say i do oh, i killed m easy and envy and what'd you say to drama me? oh all types of shit like what i'd be like i want to i told drama's drama's got a beard yeah, yeah. i'm gonna brush your fucking beard it just seems nice. <laughs> it's like a nice thing to do. <laughs> and drama would be like, yo, you weird, bro. <laughs> it's the truth, though. I tell I tell him he pull his fucking pants up. Why? Because he's I'm, flirting? I'm tired. Exactly. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing your little red box of briefs that I've been watching for the past nine years. Yo. Pull your goddamn pants up, Envy. <laughs> Envy really okay? got no ass, huh? Do some squats. Yeah, no cheeks, no cheeks. You got no cheeks. No Yo, cheeks, Envy, bro. do some squats, no bro. Cheeks. Long back, ba long, long beige back. back. You know long I mean? beige back. How you gonna bust it wide open when mm. you got nothing to bust? Nothing. And that's why he shows it off so much. He like to he like to do push ups. You know what I'm saying? With his Come pants on, sagging. Bro. He'll, he'll lift his shirt up a little bit so all his ass is out. Come on, You know what bro. I mean? We're and then wonder men. why your motherfucker's saying shit. That's it. What are you wearing, Envy? What are you why wearing? Why would you wear that why if you, you don't want me to say something? Thank you. You're Y'all missing the, the real point of it all. What's the point? What's the point? Because, like, for me, Sam and Michaela to do that, we're all friends. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. We ain't talking about y'all. We talking about dicks over here yeah, right now. Yo, See, why, why would you even jump into this conversation? Real talk, man. We over here man. a nice gay moment, and here you come wanting to add some goddamn women to the mix. This dick talk, not pussy talk. Dick talk. Dick, talk. dick segment. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. Let's stick to that shit. You know come what on, mean? now. Fuck shit. out of here. Yeah. But y'all are friends, too, though. You're not going to do it to a random guy on the street. Oh, says who? <laughs> <laughs> See, I won't walk up to some random guy in the street. Do you need tell me? Tell him he got fat ass. Are you saying you need me to push this culture forward? <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you telling me I need to take this to the streets, Taylor? <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? You, If you want me to objectify these guys for real, for real? Real talk. You want them to feel the pain that you felt your whole entire life? Let's go. You want me to go out there with these Tims and these jeans on and start catcalling motherfuckers? If I wasn't a married man, I'd take you up on you. <laughs> Black man don't cheat. Black okay. man don't cheat. You know what I'm saying? I read that in a book a long time ago, though, From Niggas to Gods, man. What? <laughs> that was the name of the book, From Niggas to Gods by Akil. And he said he was talking about how guys objectify women and catcall women and comment on women. And he was like, what if fucking Mike Tyson was walking the streets doing that shit to dudes? Yeah. Slapping them on the ass, catcalling. What would you do? Hey, you got it, Mike. You guys never gay guys do that to you? Yeah, but not as crazy. They just they usually lock in with some eye contact. That's all. And then they try to see where you're at. Yeah. This is what gay guys do. They'll be like this. They'll be like. (laughs) 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 Then they wait for you to do something back to let them know it's okay. Not the gay guys out there. They'd be like, uh, 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 Charla, I know you just ain't gonna walk by here with that little fat ass Charla and not come speak to me. Wait, what gay guys do you know that talk like that? I need to meet these gay guys. You even put his hand on his hip like a little teapot. Did you see that? Please tell me we got that. I'm Shala. I'm Shala. I see you got rips in your jeans. Uh, yo, a gay teapot would be funny as hell. I'm is a there a teapot s- short and stout? Where Here is, is my dick? dick? Here, Here is, is my, my mouth. mouth. <laughs> Oh my god, man. Oh, see? See what a little structure does? A little to the structure, show? baby. A little structure. That's a little bro. format. Listen to Uncle Shala. That's he all. knows the game. This little f- is formatted. He knows That's all. the game. We just need a little format. Everything else will flow. <laughs> we just need, we oh, just need a little shit. format. All right, let's take a break for a second um, from this very well formatted show. Beautiful. Let's talk formatted. about Boost Beautiful. Mobile. Beautiful. Okay, uh, with Boost Mobile, you finally have everything you can want in a wireless carrier. With no annual service contract, Boost Mobile offers a range of data plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices. Their network is super reliable and super fast, so you can post up and watch the game or stream beautiful podcasts like the Brilliant Idiots almost anywhere, okay? We all know smartphones are expensive. Wouldn't it be nice to not force the family to wrestle over one phone? Man, step your game up with Boost Mobile and you can get four free Samsung Galaxy A20 phones when you switch. And if you switch to Boost Mobile today, you'll get four lines for just $25 per line per month. Step up with Boost Mobile and switch today. Now, if you want a super reliable, super fast nationwide network to keep you connected, switch now to Boost Mobile. Limited time offer while supplies last. New customers only. Requires port and activation from eligible carrier. One free device per line. Users using more than 35 gigabytes of data during a billing cycle may be deprioritized during during times of network congestion. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com or retailer for full details. And the Brilliant Idiots today is also sponsored by Untuck It. Ever wonder why traditional button-ups look so long and baggy? That's because they were never meant to be worn that way. Untuck It shirts were specifically designed to be worn untucked, okay? Untuck It is the brand you've been looking for. It's the original untucked shirt, a modern solution to an old problem with no tucking or tailoring required. No matter your size or shape, their shirts are the perfect untucked length. Now, is Untuck It judging people's size and shape? By saying no matter what your size or shape is, that means they're paying attention. <sighs> that is. It's hard not to comment on people's size or shape. That's true. Now, don't just take our word for it. Try Untuck It for yourself. Visit untuckit.com and use code IDIOTS for 20% off your first order. They even offer free shipping and returns on all orders in the U.S. That's untuckit.com and promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your first order. Untuck It. Bro. What did you think about... Um, At what point did you know you were going with the mouth? <laughs> Originally, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You said I was, it, it was the other part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, like how do I get dick? mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should I start with dick and then go to the mouth? No, I got don't. the mouth. Mouth is there. The mouth is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Since we're talking about shit, you won't care about next week. Yeah. Jeff Bezos says he's donating ten billion dollars to climate change. Yes. I don't see the problem. I don't know why people get upset at billionaires when billionaires actually want to use their money. Yeah. For good. But why climate change? Why not to like homelessness? Okay, true. You know, not mad at that. I, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I don't see because me Cause personally, if I was homeless, I'd be upset because like, if 
finally it's getting warmer, right? Which makes me being homeless way better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now this guy's going to reverse global warming. So now I just get colder. So why don't you just buy me a house or at least give me an apartment or something to stay in? And then I'm good. Listen, this is uh, Lenard McKelvey talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Charlemagne the God. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I want y'all to be totally clear on this. I don't think there's anything that we can do to stop climate change. Now, I've mm. done no research on this subject. This is why we call it the brilliant idiots. Ah. Okay. Okay, keep going I, on I this. I like this. I, I just don't think that there's anything we can do yeah. to stop the natural evolution of the earth. I, I think the earth is going to do what it's going to do. Yes. I don't give a fuck how many rockets you shoot in the sky. I don't care if you don't eat plastic straws on the beach and mm -hmm. all of that shit like that. The earth is going to do what it does. Yes. Have you ever seen a Caribbean island after a hurricane? Nope. A hurricane changes the whole structure and landscape of the island. When wow. I go to Anguilla, you know I love Anguilla. That's my favorite place in the world still yeah. to this day. But there's certain places I would go in Anguilla. The beach looks totally different after the hurricane. Right. The water feels totally different after the hurricane. And when you talk to some of the locals, they'll tell you like, yeah, you know, the waters are a little bit rougher here since the hurricane. I don't know why that is. All I know is there is nothing you can do to stop the earth from Whatever it's it's got going on right, right. now. Hurricanes are going to be stronger. Maybe that's just the way shit is supposed to be. Yeah. Earthquakes are going to be stronger. Maybe that's just the way shit is supposed to be. So maybe <clears throat> the expiration date on Earth is coming up for humans. Yeah. And, you know, Elon Musk and all these guys are trying to get to Mars, all these other places, trying to find another place to inhabit. And maybe that's just the right thing. Maybe that's what we got to do. Bro, we don't know if, you know, however many years ago when the dinosaurs went extinct. Yeah. Why? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't even know what was before the 90s, so we think we know. And we probably, and probably listen, I'm probably, there's people out there that's way smarter than me. Yeah. That's probably listening to this, like, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. All I know is that everything runs its course. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So if we're at the final meal, right? <laughs> What should we do? How should we ride this out? What do I you think? I just think we should live life. Like, I don't think there's anything we can do when the earth is done. It's done. If the earth decides to open up right now, earthquake, swallow this whole building, what can we do? Bro, I was in Mexico and there was an earthquake. There's nothing you could do. You just, you, do. you just sit there and you got to deal with it. If volcanoes erupt somewhere and that fucking lava destroy the whole city, what can you do? Yeah, you can do nothing. If it's fucking, uh, if, if it right now it starts snowing yeah, and it won't stop snowing. Yeah. And forecasters are like, it's 10 inches of snow. And it's like, it's 20 inches and it's 40 inches. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're at my vertical leap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And you're at 60 fucking seven. Like, what if, no, seriously, what if it just snows so much, yeah. never stops, and there's nothing we can do? So the snow just piles up, piles up, piles up. You can't even leave your motherfucking house. Eventually, you're going to die. The yeah. earth can destroy us at any time it wants to. Yes. So yes. I just don't think there's anything you can do when it comes to things like climate change. Should we treat the earth better? Absolutely. Let How? I mean, just respect it, bro. How? I remember a long time ago you said you said your dad always told you, wear a suit to the garden. Yeah. Respect the building. Yep. It's a certain shit I don't do. Like, I don't litter. Yep. I don't know why I don't litter. Maybe it is because of all of those, you know, don't litter PSAs yeah, back yeah, yeah. in the day. But I just think that's whack. I just think that's whack to throw some shit on the ground. Like, this is the earth. Yeah. Like, this is, this is ours. You know what I'm saying? This is something uh, beautiful that God created for us to inhabit. Like, why would I just throw some shit in the earth? I wouldn't throw some shit in the ocean. You know what I mean? It's just right. certain shit I just wouldn't do. Just respect the earth. Now, will you go as far as not using plastic straws? No, I think that's stupid because paper, first of all, Paper straws are the worst shit work. ever invented. It just don't work. You know what paper straws make me want to do? Throw them shit in the ocean. As soon as I use the <laughs> shit and them shit crumble the fuck up. Like, you ever been laying on the beach with a, perp, a paper fucking straw and you trying to suck your fucking drink and then that shit crumbles up and you can't even get your drink? So yeah. You just take that shit, throw it in the fucking ocean, yeah. goes in the turtle's nose and you just drink the drink yeah. out the cup? Yeah. Like, paper straws suck, bro. Yeah. Now, I've seen metal straws. Yeah. But I wouldn't use them shit at a restaurant if shit seem unsanitary. But my Agreed. wife got them at the house. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just like, it's just certain shit. I I just think you should just respect the earth as best as you can. What drink do you guys have at the house that requires a straw? Um, I never drank anything with a straw at my house. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I just think she did it just to be woke. Yeah. Progressive. Progressive environmental. conscious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I've never yeah. used them. I yeah. just started using the honey spoons. What's a honey spoon? Mm. I'm old, so I do tea right before I go to bed, right? Okay. And the honey spoon... <laughs> <laughs> the, honey spoon, the honey spoon is a is a spoon made of honey, and when you make your tea, you put it in there and you stir and it, it with just it, and it just to... melts. Oh man, change your whole fucking life, bro. Because I'm the type of person that used to always use honey. Honey gets messy. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you know, you squeeze it and then it be in yeah. the, the jar. It yeah. starts to look old. You don't know if it's good or not. Yeah. That honey spoon, man, life changing. That's a genius idea. I fuck with the honey spoon. That's a genius idea. Question is, what do you do when you have cold tea? Who drinks cold tea? Isn't that what sweet tea is? In nah, the I do that at home. I, 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 I haven't drank sweet tea in a long time. If I'm home in South Carolina, I drink sweet tea. I was home in South Carolina this weekend. I didn't have any sweet tea. But in the summertime in South Carolina, when it's hot as a motherfucker, you got some sweet, sweet tea, tea hits the goddamn spot. Do you think that's why there's so many gay people in Atlanta? The sweet tea? Yeah. Nah, it's because of that sweet dick. Sweet D is what turned that sweet D is what got people goddamn turned out in Atlanta. The tea don't got nothing to do with it. That sweet D will make you spill that tea. Will it? Okay. Will it now? Will it now? I do that to you, man. <laughs> Hit it again, Taylor. It here. That penis will do that to you, man. Okay. All right. So what else we got? Oh, what do you think of Bloomberg? I'm, um, I got to see what his policies are at the end. Right now, I think they're doing a really good job of making him a villain because he's a billionaire and allegedly, um, racist. Right. But I understand once you run for president, they're going to paint you as the worst thing that you've ever said. Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like we live in this really shitty time right now where interpersonal relationships mean nothing. And the one thing that you did in your life completely defines you, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't care what anybody tells me about you. I've had enough hours with you where if somebody reads a tweet of yours and then goes, this is who he is, I can go, no, I know him. Mm -hmm. I've spent hours with him. Mm -hmm. You're, that one thing you know about him doesn't override all the things mm -hmm. that I know. And um, so with Bloomberg, I just got to know what he wants to do, what his policies are. And I think that he's really taken advantage of like a very weak democratic. Weak is an understatement. Yeah, just a pathetic democratic pool or whatever it is. Yeah. What I what I will say is this: they don't want Bernie to run to to get the nomination because they know they can't corrupt him. So they're trying to find. Oh, matter of fact, it's been a couple of weeks since I was here. I I said what was going to happen. They were going to try to steal that shit from him in mm -hmm. Iowa, and they did. And they realized that Pete will do whatever they tell him. So Pete is now their new like uh, the democratic elite. I don't know toy. Pete is. I, I don't know we'll if see. he is. I think, we'll um, you know, I was on CNN last week. I was on Aaron Burnett's show. What you? What was your take? Well, what's your take on Bloomberg first? Well, I said that, you know, um, the best apology for any racist rhetoric, uh, the best apology for any, you know, racist policies, legislation, is not only change behavior, but a black agenda. You mm -hmm. know, the same way that you created policies and legislation that oppressed and marginalized a certain community then create some legislation and policies that can uplift and empower that community. Like, it's not even rocket science to me. Like, I'm yeah. not looking for a perfect candidate. Like, yeah. you know, especially when you're dealing with a, you're dealing with a 77-year-old <coughs> white man. Yeah. He was born in 1942. This is... He was Bloomberg. He was, he's 78 now. So he was 22 years Bloomberg old. Bloomberg is 78? Bloomberg turned 78 on Valentine's Day. <laughs> right? Yes, he turned 78 on Valentine's Day. So you're dealing with a guy who turned 22, 23 years old when the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was established. You don't think that he was raised with a certain mindset? <clears throat> now, is it possible for him to grow, grow out of that mindset? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, at the time when I was on CNN last week, I said, yo, the best apology is a change behavior and a black agenda. Uh, that's something I have yet to see from Biden. Um, but Bloomberg actually has a black agenda. Yeah, Biden's senile. I don't think Biden's all there. Uh, Bloomberg has a black agenda. It's called the it's called the Greenwood Initiative. I actually, I actually wrote some notes down of why I like the Greenwood Initiative. I, I like it because it's based uh, around economics, and it's his economic justice plan for Black America, and it's a plan to create economic justice and create generational wealth for Black Americans by addressing systematic bias and making strategic investments in communities, in in, in businesses, which I think is dope. You know, um, it sounds great. I just need to know the exact things that he's going to do he, to make it great. He, he has them. And I'm sure he has it outlined. Like, look, it's like I think it's like a, he wants to create a million new homes for, for, for black Americans. I, I, great. I, I forgot. I forgot the details of it, but it's a good. Yeah. I, I just want everybody to go out there and do their own research. There's no need for me to yeah. regurgitate things. Just go out there and look at the Greenwood Initiative and see if you like it. I like his criminal justice plan. 
What was his? What was his criminal? He just plan? announced that yesterday. His criminal justice plan is: um, he wants to reduce the prison population. He wants to soften federal drug and sentencing laws, and he wants to fund community engagement and rehabilitation programs. It's a heavy emphasis on mental health for people once they get out of prison, because prison is a very traumatic, you know, experience. So I mean, listen, I like those kind of things, right? But I do understand that this is dream selling season. And I understand that they're telling people whatever it is that they want to hear. So what I needed to find out was, why do all these Negroes love Mayor Bloomberg so much? Why, with these racist policies he's implemented, like stop and frisk, why, with saying things like, you know, the housing crisis happened because they, they didn't keep reinforcing redlining, why are all of these Negroes falling in line? So I had to start asking questions and digging, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because he's been putting his money where his mouth is for years. Give me give me an example. Um the 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 YMI, which is um was it was a youth motivational initiative. Young no young men's initiative, which actually I was a part of. I forgot I even did this. Mm. This is how long ago it was in New York. It was like 2013, 2014. And um it was an initiative that he started to address four areas that were persistent problems for black and Latino men. And it was education, health, employment, and the justice system. And he funded funded it with thirty million dollars. Of, of his own money. His own money. Yeah. You He'll know? do it. He's philanthropic as a motherfucker. Yeah. And this he's, guy's he's, sharp. He, he's one of the biggest philanthropists out there. He is. But also, all of those mayors, like it was like 100 mayors that have endorsed Bloomberg, it's because his charity <laughs> supported like 200 different cities with grants and uh, a lot of other assistance. And that was about $350 million he he dumped into those those cities. And a lot of those were inner in cities. He's giving away billions. Full of black and brown people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, like, like Birmingham, Alabama. He partnered with them on an early childhood initiative. Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, Alabama, 71% black. Jackson, Mississippi is 81% black. I'm not saying that, you know, Bloomberg is not a racist because his policies were definitely racist. Right. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is it comes a point in time where you have to learn how to use enemies. Because when you hire an enemy, mm -hmm. an enemy sometimes will be more, more loyal than a friend because an enemy like has, has more to, to prove. Yeah, he's got to prove something. And I you. use the word enemy and I know people say, oh, that's harsh. But no, when you create the kind of policies that Joe Biden has created or Bloomberg has created, those policies were definitely enemies of black and brown people. So if you created those policies, then that made you an enemy of black and brown people. I, I think that uh, I think Bloomberg's a big data guy. And oh, I absolutely. think data is inherently racist, right? Because yes. data doesn't take into account history, right? When you're just looking at numbers, you're not going, oh, shit, what type of oppression did these people go through to be in this situation? Mm -hmm. The data just goes, hey, these are the people that are doing this. So when you make a policy like stop and frisk, I don't think the start of the policy is how can we oppress black and brown people? I think the policy, I think he spoke on this, was, okay, who is responsible for the most gun crimes in New York? Mm -hmm. And it was like overwhelmingly black and brown males, right? It was like 95% black and brown males between the age of like 16 and like 24, something like that. So the policy, the implementation of the policy, the execution of the policy is racist, Right. Because it's based on data that doesn't take into account why these people even are carrying guns. Yeah. What, what type of situations that they were forced to be in to have to, one, carry a gun, maybe to protect themselves, or two, to carry a gun because they're in a gang because that looked like the only way out in these neighborhoods. But when you're just a data guy, you don't think about those things. You just go, what is the solution to this? Yeah. And so when we say, is Bloomberg racist because of the policies, I don't know if he could be racist. I'm not saying he's not. I don't know if I subscribe to that. Um, I don't know if I specifically sub subscribe to that ideology because he's trying to create a policy that's going to fix a problem. If the data shows that this is the problem, then you address the data. Well, the problem with Mike Bloomberg and his data is that when people started to see that the overwhelming amount of people that were being stopped by Stop and Frisk were black and brown and they weren't finding shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, right, right, and right. other black leaders and lawmakers are trying to tell him like, yo, this shit is inherently racist like this shit is discriminatory like a motherfucker right he wasn't listening he was tone deaf to it and it's like yo if you're targeting a certain group of people how much are you missing because yeah. if i'm so focused on this yeah the white guy behind me with the ak-47 just walking by me i bet you if you go search those communities yeah you'll run up in some of these dorm rooms at fucking harvard and yale well, and wherever else and see if you don't find some drugs and all is, types of other shit it is an interesting thing because we gotta keep the same energy right because mm -hmm. none of us seem to have a problem when 
every brown person gets randomly selected by the TSA, right? When we go on a flight, you know what I mean? If Akash is flying with me, Akash is Indian. He's not even Muslim, right? He's just brown enough. I'm not cultured. See, <laughs> so the TSA, shout out to the TSA, but like they're basically, I assume, told, hey, the brown ones, just give them a random selection, et cetera. And the rest of us just go, well, if that's what we got to do, you so we're why, safe. You know why, though? Because of 9 11. All it takes is one incident to shift everybody's perspective oh, on something. But, but that's what I'm saying. So imagine you're like someone who grew up in a neighborhood in Brooklyn that's kind of rough and you've mm-hmm. been robbed a bunch of times and now this stop and frisk comes about and you're like, well, shit, all right, if they're TSA in Brooklyn and everybody's scared to walk around with a gun now, so they're going to keep their gun at home. Well, shit, I'm okay with that. And then they're like, well, yo, it's a little racist. Don't you think it's racist? They're just picking on that one group. And it's yeah. like, well, if I'm safer, that's the thing about Americans that I've yeah. realized. Like, like Americans, we are intoxicated with our abundance, right? Like, oh, absolutely. Like, like we're you, spoiled with we're abundance. So, but, and here's the thing. We, when, you have, when you have abundance, you don't care about truth. Like, we know they killed Epstein, right? Or, or, or we know they killed Epstein or got him out or whatever the fuck happened. But our lives are so comfortable, Comfortable, we're like, eh, okay. And we have no reason to ever, you know what other things do? You, you know what I'm saying? What like, you're we saying know, is absolutely like, true. They, know, they try to steal the election from Bernie Sanders in Iowa again. You know, we know they're doing it. But we I'm going to go, go back to Epstein. Yeah, go, 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 go. You know why nobody cares about Epstein? Go. Because we know we'll never be in that position. We only feel that way about things that could potentially happen to us. Yeah. I will never have a pedophile island <laughs> hosted, yeah. Hosted, yeah. hosting presidential candidates. and. I got to look into presidents. this Anguilla. Man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a lot of time in the Anguilla. I'm just saying I would never be in that position. Yes, yes, yes. Certain yes, yes. things hit different when you can see yourself in that yeah. situation. Kobe's death hits different. Yep. Why? Because you get up, you take your kids to the extracurricular activities all the time, whether you're driving a car or flying in a helicopter, just random routine something yep. happening on a Sunday. Nipsey's death hit different because, you know, you're helping somebody out, you're at a store on a Sunday morning, your goddamn business, and you get gunned down. Yep. So I'm, all I'm saying is, the Larry Epstein's of the world, easy to ignore. Yeah. Bernie Sanders of the world, it affects us because that you want that to be your candidate. But if that's not your candidate, you don't really give a fuck. And you don't really need them. Like most people in America are not suffering to the point where they're like, I need a savior to take us out. Yeah. Right. And that is the beauty of abundance and how the government can really, or the powers that be, not even the government, the powers that be can really get away with anything they want because they know that we're comfy. At the end of the day, we'll be like, man, should I go out and protest that Iowa shit? Ah, fuck it. They just got a new uh, chicken sandwich at Popeye's. I'll just go eat that. Mm-hmm. You know, ah, fuck it. We got a new Call of Duty video a game. It's always, always a, distraction, a distraction. And the distraction is abundance and comfort. If we're out here like suffering, suffering, yeah. suffering, yeah. we'll be lying the fucking streets. We'll be, fu- we'll do what happened with the civil rights movement. Black people suffering, suffering, suffering. What were they doing? Protesting, every protesting, day. protesting, fighting, fighting, fighting every day. That is a fact. I, and I think that they've sadly, lulled us to sleep, bro. Sadly, that's what's gonna happen. Gonna have to happen in America for America to wake all the way to fuck up. Is we gotta suffer? It's either gonna be like an extreme natural disaster, like it's gonna, it's gonna be an extreme natural disaster, mm-hmm. or it's gonna be UFOs fucking returning, mm-hmm. or if it's gonna be Donald Trump doing what I've been telling y'all he's gonna do and never leave the fucking White House. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> and change the goddamn Constitution. Maybe so where he doesn't ever have to leave the motherfucking White House, which he's been priming us for for the past year and a half. I've been Possible. trying to I've been trying to tell y'all this shit and y'all look at me like I'm the goddamn monkey in the Lion King, Rafiki. <laughs> but he's putting out he put out that Instagram meme that I let y'all it. know 2024, 2028, 2032, 2036. It, it's it's, it's actually, everything Trump does to me is actually kind of brilliant in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because it's such in plain sight shit. Like all those pardons he did yesterday. I missed it. Oh my God. He pardoned 12 people yesterday. During the he debate. Pardoned the old, he pardoned the, the old owner of the 49ers. He pardoned, like he pardoned, the, he pardoned a lot of people, right? Like 12 people. Mm-hmm. He's priming you. So when he pardons Roger Stone, that nobody even blinks. Oh, yeah. Roger's out. <laughs> Roger's he out. He basically said it yesterday when he was doing the press conference. He's like, just watch him see. I think Roger's getting the raw deal. This is why he like... And there's nothing anybody will do. He has made the, the, the most abnormal shit in politics look completely normal. And nobody even knows except for people that are actually politicians. I'll respect him if he does it before the election. 
Or Paul and Roger Stone? Because that means... Yeah, let him sit for a little while. Well, well here's the thing. Little. If you do it after the election... Well, you can't do it. He got to do it before the election. No, you could do it after if he you might, get I mean, elected. That's, yeah, that's, that's determining if he actually wins. Right, but what I'm saying is like, if you do it before, you're basically giving your opponent some uh, ammunition. So It don't but, matter. Oh, no, no, I know it don't matter. But I, I'm just saying I respect... I respect the the loyalty. Trump is the Black Panther, bro. Son. You know how Black Panther do wore that fucking suit? And the more the suit gets hit, the more power it gets. Shut, shut, Trump is the fucking shut. Black Panther, Trump is bro. Black Panther, dog. What are you talking about? Trump, <laughs> Trump is Trump Black is, Panther, Don't that hurt Trump? Dude, Ammunition. Son, we got to call him Orange, Orange Cheetah. You shoot a fucking yeah. Orange Cheetah. <laughs> 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 you fucking hit Trump with a nuke if you want to. He going to give you that boop, energy boop, right boop, back. Yeah. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till Trump start locking up his political opponents. You think? Do I, I, think, I, think? I think you're over. I think you're a little paranoid about that. He's already said it. Y'all don't be listening to Trump. I listen. To, I actually watch. I listen to Trump. I watch CNN. I watch MSNBC. I listen to the things Trump says. Yeah. They, they, yesterday they had this whole thing on CNN where they had it was it was Trump's if I was advisors. President, you'd be in jail. That's what he said to Clinton. Remember? Yeah. Hillary. Trump's advisors yeah. trying to talk Trump off the ledge from going to get these motherfuckers now. Everybody that ran Trump through this goddamn impeachment mm-hmm. shit, Trump wants revenge. I'm looking for revenge. Son, you wouldn't do that? <laughs> nah. Oh. I wouldn't. Charlotte, stop it, bro. I'm the president. Charlotte, stop it, bro. Nah, for what? Charlotte, you are so... <laughs> you are so... <laughs> Come on, yeah, take a take a big sip of water. Son. I'm the president. <laughs> nah, so if you come from my neck, you try to destroy my legacy, try to destroy everything that that I am, everything that I built. You think you're not gonna get some payback? I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it. I am. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, gonna, I'm giving I'm, you smoke. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna waste that kind of energy. I'm, I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it. But if I get a shot, <laughs> trust me. If I get a shot. If I get a clean shot, you taking it? Hey, <laughs> Biden, Secret it. Service will. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm. That's you sending out saying. the shooters? That's all I'm saying. Bernie, I'm gonna tell you something. Else. They are dropping the ball on Bernie. Who? Um, who, 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 who? The DNC. Only because y'all see how corrupt that they are, right? Now, like, when, oh yeah, yeah. When, yeah, when yeah, I say yeah, Democrat, yeah. I just want to point this out. Democrats, like the a lot of the politicians, a lot of the state and city politicians, a lot of us Democrat voters. I'm not saying we're corrupt, right? What I'm saying is the powers that be who are the people who run the DNC and the the people who fund all these politicians, the Bro. billionaires that fund all this shit, uh, billionaires that fund all this shit don't go and do it themselves because then they'll be hated, right? Because you have to lie to the people and tell them, sell them the dream and then not deliver on the dream. So they find puppets. AOC is a puppet, right? They're all puppets, like all these characters, and the Republicans do it too. They're all public. They're all puppets. Not Bloomberg. No, no. Well, here's the thing, right? You now, got more money. Now that for the now for one of the first times, what you see is you're seeing the oligarchs, the ones that are the powers that be, the ones coming that down fu- off the hills, coming down the hill, and now they yes. in the game. Yes. And Trump was one of the first people to do that. Now Trump is not like a big, big, big time billionaire like a but Bloomberg is. But Bloomberg is like with the ninth richest person in the world or some shit like this that. This is the real deal. So real now. Deal. You see now, but what what I what I'm trying to point out is the Democrats. What they've always done is given the um, given the view, and I bought the dream view that they were the honest, moralistic ones. No. But when you look into their policies, they take the power out of the vote. Like the whole idea of a caucus, you remove the whole idea of super delegates. You remove the power from everybody. The people. Got their cheat codes, bro. So so this is what they're just trying to do. They're just trying to get the fifty one percent. They know that the Republicans got the religious folks. They got maybe like country farmer whites, all those folks. They're like, okay, how do we get to 51? What's left? Black people, sell them some dreams. You're never going to give them. Uh, gay people, sell them some dreams. You you actually might give them. They gave them the gay marriage shit. They'll give you, they'll give you, they'll give you little Crumbs. tokens you go. here and there. there yeah, 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 yeah. Just to make, to make it seem like they're progressive and for the people. But they're just trying that. to get 51% to keep the powers that be in line. That's why they hate Bernie because they know that he interrupts the flow of the powers that be. They're cool with Bloomberg. They, they literally changed the debate. Well, he paid. Well, he bought it. $800,000 like two days before he announced his candidacy to the DNC. Well, it was through like a subsidiary of the DNC, but it got back to the DNC so somehow. he bought his way and onto cha- the debate they, stage. And they, and they changed, they changed the, the rules. rules for him to be in the next two debates. He's in Nevada. To, he was in Nevada last night. We're record, we recording this on Wednesday. So he's on Nevada tonight and he's going to be in South Carolina. It, they South are Carolina just next. as corrupt as 
the Republicans. They are no yeah. different. They are just, a, they lack they are. all these people. There are people in power. They do not have the same moral compass as the rest of us. Right. So don't look at them through these eyes, these like doe eyed lovebirds. Like, Oh, they're fighting for me. No, no. Remove party and go, which candidate, like you've been telling people for months, Vote your which, interest. That's it. which candidate is saying you're black and you're rich? That's who it. wants to take care of rich black people? You're that's, black and you're poor? It. Who wants to take care of poor black that's people? It. Because that is what's going to change your life. Get out your fucking feelings. For real. And get into your interests. You think Bloomberg does it? Bloomberg. You think Bernie does it? Bernie. You think Trump does it? Trump. But vote who the fuck you think is going to take care of you. Because nothing will change if you don't. All I give a fuck about is people's black agenda. I think right now Mike Bloomberg has the best black agenda. I think Elizabeth Warren's black agenda is really just a part of her larger initiative. And it's that whole trickle down shit. You know what I'm saying? Other than the black maternal, uh, black maternal stuff she got planned, but nothing is, is, is some, some, some targeting black people specifically. What about Trump? Does he have any black agenda? Kanye, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I've never even looked into Trump's black agenda. But but listen, by the way, everybody should have one. You know, Mike Bloomberg, he says he wants to create 100,000 new black-owned small businesses, create 1 million new black homeowners, invest $70 billion in our 100 most disadvantaged neighborhoods, re-in- reinvigorate efforts to defend civil rights, collect better data on hiring, pay, proc- procurement, and lending. Look, listen, I don't... I, I, like I said, it's dream selling season, right? Mm-hmm. But that shit sounds good. Mm. And I once again... We have to learn how to use our enemies because when you hire an enemy, because that's what you're doing when you vote for a motherfucking president, you're hiring somebody. Mm -hmm. When you hire a a, a former enemy, that person will go harder than a friend sometimes because that former enemy has something to prove. So when I see him giving $5 million to Stacey Abrams' fair fight campaign, or I see him, you know, dishing out $350 million to, you know, these mayors in these inner cities, when Mm -hmm. I see him dishing $30 million to the Young Men's Initiative for Black and Latinos, I... I see a guy who is putting his money where his mouth is, and I give a fuck about that bag when it comes to black people, Mm -hmm, mm goddammit. I'm going to tell you, I was talking to one of my peoples who's way smarter than me, and um, the person told me, stop caping for these hoes. (laughs) And I said, we have to stop saying things like, we not caping for these hoes. And I'm just going to be honest. I know we're in front of shows, but this is what I said. I said, rhetoric like that is why niggas don't want to vote now. But you are correct. They are our hoes. So who's going to turn the most tricks for us? We have to vote our interests. If our interests are black people, currently out of all the candidates, Bloomberg has put his money where his mouth is for black folks more than any of the other hoes. So I want the hoe that's going to bring us our money. All I care about is black people getting to the goddamn bag. That's it. All that other shit means nothing to me. Racist rhetoric, all like, it's like, yes. Hold him accountable for that shit. Hold that shit over his fucking head. But if this person is going out of their way to prove that they want to right their wrongs, why the fuck wouldn't you you be down for that? Mm. Because there is no perfect candidate. Yeah. Joe Biden, 94 crime bill. Where's his black agenda? Mm. Bernie Sanders voted for the 94 crime bill. Mm. Where's his black agenda? Mm. Pete Buttigieg, he's got a history in South Bend. Black people don't like him. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, who you going for? Elizabeth Warren, I, I, her black agenda, I don't like it. I just think it's that whole trickle down, rising tide lifts all boat shit. And guess what? Black people's whole black people's boat got a hole in it. Who's gonna fix the goddamn hole in the boat? Mexicans. Man, shut up. Man. <laughs> 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 well, if Bloomberg's gonna pay the goddamn Mexicans to fix the hole in the boat, then fucking hire the goddamn Mexicans. Now black and brown people are putting more employed. Right. I'm not mad about it. Yeah. That's all I'm simply saying. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second, pay some bills. you got to turn your dream into reality with Squarespace, okay? If you're new to this podcast, we told you time over, time over. Um, you do not have a business if you do not have a website. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch that passion project, okay? Uh, whether it's a new business, you want to publish content, sell products, whatever you want to do, Squarespace is the tool. Okay, they have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything 
Optimize for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers, lawyers, artists, to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot. Offer code is idiot. Now, stop being bold. That's right. You can do that now. It's in your power to stop being bold. The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. That's what I did over a decade ago. All right. I got on finasterides, the active ingredient inside hymns, and that shit grew back and it is thick and is full. You can look at me right now. You go to forhims.com. That's F O R H I M S, hims.com. It's your one stop shop for that hair loss, okay? Prevention. They're helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. It's not snake oil pills that you're getting at a gas station. This is the real deal prescription medication, make you keep your hair. Just answer a few questions online. A doctor will review them and determine if it's right for you, and they can prescribe your medication to be shipped directly to your door. Dive into 2020 hair first. Right now, our listeners can get started with the first month free. That's right, free. Go to 4 slash BI. That's 4 that slash BI, okay? And remember, the prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if the prescription is appropriate. Offer is valid only if prescribed. There's a three-month minimum uh, per, uh, subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See the website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash B-I, and you get your first month free. Let's get back to the show. All right, guys. I think that uh, we got Asking Idiots, too. Oh, oh shit. shit. Last segment. We closing out with oh, Asking Idiots. Oh, shit. The Bloomberg stuff was the deep dive. We don't have a, we don't have a name for the deep dive yet, guys, but my, my idea Should is- Should we call it Bucket Talk? Bucket Talk. <laughs> yes! 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 We are calling it Bucket Talk! Yes! It is called Bucket Talk, god damn it, because we go deep! Yes! 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 Because it feels endless. The discussion- Discussion feels Ooh. it could go on forever. I love shit like that. <laughs> yes. See how naturally that came? Thank you. Thank you. I knew it was her name. I, was, I know the reason I couldn't come up with a name. Taylor just second. go, yes, thank you, like she said no, it. She goes, thank, no, thank you. Well, thank you. As the only woman in the room. Yeah, yeah. She might have the bucket. Are you? Are you <laughs> women, <laughs> women, women like her, women like her might have been your inspiration Do shows. Do I'm not. just saying. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I, as an imaging wise, okay. I have you don't an have idea. the bucket. You got a little sand pail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing with you. <laughs> All right, ask an idiot. Okay. Five ask an idiot questions. Let's go. Okay. All right. All right. Oh wow, this is sick. Um. All right. All right. All right. Um. Okay. How? See the God. How did you meet Wax? And um. How were you able to have a brotherly friend bond with him all the way to now? Oh, man. Great question. I met Wax in 2001. Ooh, that's a good one after. My wife uh, was going to uh, college at the University of South Carolina. You know, she's a game coach. She graduated from the University of South Carolina. And I was doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina at the time. I was working at um the Big DM. And I used to sell mixtapes. And so my cousin here in Jersey, his name is uh, John. They call him Shaolin. He was like, yo, I got a homeboy down there. You should go holler at him. And uh, the homeboy's name was Louie. And so I went to go holler at Louie. And Louie was, at the time, roommates with Wax and my other guy, Powder. And so it's just like I was over there selling mixtapes. And it's just one of those things, you know, you meet somebody and y'all just... Kick it. Yeah, y'all just mesh. Like, it, it literally was just that simple. Went over there to sell mixtapes, right. laughing, joking. And it's just like, same shit we do now, he was doing back then. Like, I would go to parties, Wax would be with me. Because you got to understand, they was in college playing football. So, right. I'm hosting all the parties, I'm hosting all the concerts. We running all through South Carolina, and he just used to, he used to roll with us all the time. And that's just, it just became a thing. Now, fucking what? Damn, 19 years later? 19 years later, that's that's still my guy. Did you guys ever have like a beef or anything like that in the beginning? Never. Was there ever like any kind of discomfort? Never. You know how sometimes when dudes meet, there's like a little friction and then all never. of a sudden. Really? Never. Me and, me and Wax have never had an issue ever. 
Like, I mean, we 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 debate all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We debate, but there but there was never that like alpha tension never. between you guys. Wax is too good a spirit. Yeah, he is a really good. You know what spirit. I'm saying? Wax yeah, is yeah. one of the few dudes who don't have no jealousy, no envy. There's no. Mm. I think Wax might be too dumb to have an ego. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm being honest with you. Like, I thought he was gonna say something really sweet, no, bro. I thought that is sweet. So I thought we were getting like a tender moment. I thought you were gonna shed saying, a tear, dog. I really thought it takes a high IQ to have an ego, bro. Yeah. And I'm not wax wax has a different level of smarts. Right? It's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's got a lot of common sense. Yeah. Old man wisdom almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't think he lacks I don't think he has the intellect to have a Ego. I don't think Wax don't got no ego. No, Wax does not have an ego when it comes to girls. I've seen Wax in action. Yeah. Wax don't try to get no pussy. <laughs> wax has never tried. I'm I'm, listen, I'm not even lying to you. Yeah. In the 19 years I've known Wax, he's never tried to get pussy. You've been there. We've seen it to yeah. your own eyes. Shows. Yeah, wax yeah. can be in the lobby. Yeah. And random women will just walk up to him. Yeah. And. It's just like they lose their senses. They get as dumb as him and just yeah. want to fuck. <laughs> it's just like this energy that he gets. I'm dead serious. It's like some, it's like some Lenny off mice and men energy, bro. Yo. Look, he's speaking of the devil. Yeah. Speaking of the fucking yeah. devil, bro. Here, speaking of the devil. Angel, get the fuck out the way, I bro. <laughs> I was just explaining why I think you've gotten so much pussy over the years. Can you sit in the chair yeah, though, so we can get uh, you in the frame? Is that okay? Why do you Why do you think? Tell me what What do you think? Um, I always say because the devil was after me, and I'm saying I always prayed and I wasn't supposed to have sex before marriage, and I was into the church like that, so I was like, the devil was after me, he keeps throwing pussy at me. So you failed miserably. Oh my gosh, he's been getting me all these years. <laughs> now, Wax, I'm do sorry. you have a cock on your hat? Yes. <laughs> that's all. That's, that's <laughs> it. But the way she texts me, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> We asked how, how you guys met. We asked how you guys met. We asked how. I was, know, just, I was telling them how we met, and they were saying, "I was saying, I, I was like Wax, I said, well, "I don't think Wax has an ego. Or I think King Wax Apollo. Is, I think Wax is too dumb to have an ego. I don't even know what the ego is. Exactly. <laughs> You know? <laughs> <laughs> an eagle? Isn't that a bird? <laughs> Is that what's on my hat? An eagle's a bird, right? Ain't, ain't that a bald eagle? <laughs> All right, next question. Ask an idiot. Let's go. Um, this is a good one from uh, Devran Schaller. Your thoughts on Wilder versus Fury in the rematch? Who do you reckon will win the fight, Charla? Go ahead, Schultz. I'll come after you. You're a boxing guy. Yo, dude. I think Fury's a better boxer. I think Fury's a better... Uh, I think he's more savvy in the ring. I think he... I think everything about boxing, Tyson Fury is better. But I would be fucking crazy to think Deontay Wilder... Athlete. Is not... Not only athlete, but literally he said it perfectly. He goes, you need to be perfect for 12 rounds. I need to be perfect for two seconds. It yeah. takes one shot from down. that guy, and you go down. And yes, Fury got up, and mm -hmm. I give him a, I give him so much credit for that. He got up. I don't know if you get up if you get hit flush again. The guy hits in an otherworldly way, and I do think Fury's better. I do think Fury can outbox him. I think the majority of the fight, Fury will be winning, but it only okay, takes one. <clears throat> and so I cannot... As much as I actually want Fury to win, because I love his story, I love his comeback, I love the mental health problems, all that stuff. After that. I, I I do love it. I also am just so fucking amazed by the sheer power that this, this guy Deontay Wilder has at 212 pounds to be the most powerful puncher in the history of boxing, possibly. How, and he's an American. Like, how can you not get behind that? Absolutely. So I think the, I think he catches him. I think he catches yeah, him. I think it can go two ways. Um, a wild knockout or another draw. Um, only because Fury won't won't stay down. I think Fury will do everything you just said. I think Fury will outbox him, be winning by points. But I think Wilder will do the same thing. Put him on the canvas a couple times. Fury might get up. It might be another draw. You might get a trilogy. Mm. Um, I was watching the the I don't even know what they call it the 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 stuff leading up to the yeah, fight yeah, yeah. That, that Fox be showing. Yeah. And Wilder said some shit. Wilder was like, I'm going to be more active. Mm. Right? Because when you go watch Wilder's last couple of fights, Wilder wasn't, either with Ortiz, he wasn't throwing a lot of punches. No. Yeah. 
Because he knows he got that shot. He's just waiting for the he right time. Waiting, yeah. He said, I'm going to be a lot more active. So Wilder being a lot more active means that Wilder's going to be throwing a lot more punches, yep. which leaves a lot of other room for Fury to get hit. Another thing. But also Fury to oh, counter. And counter. He did. I, Ouch. I think, I think that's a bad strategy by bad Wilder, but strategy. go on. For Fury said too. something that yeah. made a lot of sense. Yeah. Fury was like, y'all keep talking about that right hand. He didn't lay me out with a right hand. It was the hook. It was the left hook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So think about that. Why did he even two. touch him with the right hand? No, no, <laughs> Wilder hit him with the right. He goes, it was straight right. Yeah. And then uh, as he's falling down, the hook sits yeah. him down, whatever. That, that it was, was the Fury, right that started. Yeah, Fury it. was like, Fury was like, it was the hook that dropped me. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I listen, I'm going, I, I go with Wilder. I think Wilder is just too much of a KO artist, but I agree with everything that you said about Fury. Fury's a bad motherfucker in that ring, He's bro. He's bad, man. He don't got no knockout yes. power no more, though. He doesn't have knockout power. He never had power. He had that yeah. weight, though. But say again. How much he weigh? He, so he came up. This is the other thing. This is why I got concerned. So he's been fighting around 255 for past mm-hmm. fights, and apparently his camp released that he's going to come in around 270. So that's a 15 pound. Just the weight alone on that lean is going to hit, is going to hurt Wilder. Now Wilder look good too, bro. Oh, uh, he's always looked. He's fucking he's cut out of marble. Yeah. He's yeah. he's unbelievable. But but I'm concerned about Fury because you put on 15 pounds. Now 15 pounds for a guy who's six nine and 270 pounds. It's not that much, but yeah. against a Wilder. You need to be light on your feet, yes. bro. You need to move. Yes. You don't want to stand right yeah, in front of yeah, Deontay yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking Wilder. Yeah. So I I tend to believe that I tend to believe that adding any weight could potentially slow him down and being slow against the most concussive puncher in history. You're going to sleep. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Going or, or, to or, sleep. Or Oof. he's not going to sit there and he's not going to feel it like that because you got more weight on you. Just them extra punches that are probably going to try to pierce. They ain't going to pierce that 270 like that. Yeah. So we, you like that, the heavier weight. You think um, it's better I think, for him. I mean, I, I like him more at the 250 something. That 270 it changes seems high. everything. Yeah. It changes everything with boxing. But he's li- li- he's a good counter, yo. You got to watch that Here other guy. Go. I'm, going, I'm going to wide to put a knockout though. Come on. Yeah. We yeah. Got, I, I got locked out of the iPad. Uh, another question. Let's do okay. uh, one more. I think we should two do more. four. Okay, so we did two. I was thinking five, but maybe that's too much. If they're good, we do five. Um. Okay. Clairvoyant underscore 170 asks, which would you rather drink? A cup of your mom's period blood or your dad's sperm? Come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Like, as if water's so, not available. <laughs> what the fuck? Ginger ale? Like, come on. Where's the sweet tea at? Like, come on. What are you talking about, Claire? cranberry juice say is the blood. You thought you, you thought about that one a little too hard, Claire Mom's Boyne. period blood in a fucking heartbeat. Okay, vampire. <laughs> Real talk. Come on, you get Why? sick off that. You'd though. rather drink your dad's cum than your mom's period blood? Blood is blood. No, blood is like blood girls' is waste blood. leaving their body. Say what? It's waste leaving your body. They say it's worse than shit. What? <laughs> Period blood is like waste leaving no, the body. No, it's not. It's, a bunch of it's eggs. the uterine lining. It's not worse Dead than shit. Eggs. It's, it yeah, can't be worse than shit. It's, 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 worse it's than not shit. worse than shit. Nah. Is it worse than cum? You're going to drink cum. You're going to eat cum before I've you eat period. I've seen so many girls eat cum and they're not sick. You eat blood, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're fucked up off blood, bro. So you're saying you would drink cum. You know cum is nah, blood, nah, though. I get it. it cum is, is blood? It's yeah. blood. I'm going to walk out of here, bro. No, it is. It is. It is. Did he just drop the IQ level on this No, it is. Cum is blood. Listen, I'm a... It's a whole human. What? No, it's a half a human. The other <laughs> half is in the Sperm. ovary. It's not a whole human. It's not? So it's like the head? It's just a little bit of human. Otherwise, every time you jerk off, you'd be killing babies. Duh. What? Why do you think you don't see them swimming around inside the um? How the big are your sperm, bro? <laughs> you got fucking salmon sliding out of your dick? Oh, never mind. Blood what? and semen is actually... If you got blood in your semen, something's wrong. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a problem. Wow, yeah, yeah my motherfuckers a... be moving. But but for real, I definitely would go blood over my dad's sperm. I understand dude. that. That's weird. That's like eating yourself. Yeah. Dude, girls be eating themselves all the time. They do. <laughs> you you put too much thought into that one, Clara Point. Yeah. yeah. That's why. Okay. Like, come on. Um, is it gay if you're able able to give yourself a BJ? <laughs> <laughs> what was that last? Like? Is it gay? Yeah. No, it's not gay if you're trying to suck your own dick. That's like saying it's gay if you masturbate. No, he's putting meat in your mouth. So? It's yours. It's your meat, no. dog. You got another man's dick in your hand when you're jacking off, or you got your dick in your hand when you're jacking off? Yeah. It's my dick. So what? It's still a dick. It's still a dick. I get what you're saying. So technically, you, uh, we love masturbation. We really do love rubbing our dicks. So you can't ever like say you can't ever say you never so gave you a don't hand like job. Sucking yours. If somebody says nah. you have you ever given a hand job, you have to say yes. Yeah, that's kind of wild though. I see what you're saying, but <laughs> and when wax terms, no, no. What do you mean? 
It's regular. It's mine, though. So I'm just making sure so I go to the bathroom. So what's wrong with sucking your own dick? You just up, up, no, upgrading. No, it's not. It's like jerking off. It's like you just shaking extra when you go to the bathroom. Okay. That's still playing with your dick. No, you're just shaking off. So this is like, you ever eaten like uh, Mexican food? You get some sauce on your fingers? You go... Ooh, you've licked your own fingers, bro. Wow, you licked your own yo. fingers, bro. You said. Come so on. I'm putting gloves on from now on. That's like a condom, then. <laughs> <laughs> you've licked so your you own fingers. You can suck yo. your own dick with a condom, and then it's all right. Just like put gloves on. That's kind of. Could wild. you suck your own dick with a condom, and it's all right? Nah. By the way, God knows what he was doing. Because if we could suck our own penis. dicks, we would. Oh, 100 we, percent. And we've tried. Praise God. You tried. Praise the Lord, you put the extra rib. How you gonna tell us what to do with our dicks? See, this is what's wrong with y'all feminists. Yeah. Okay, don't tell men what to do with our dicks. Yeah. We cannot suck something. our own dicks, Taylor. I'm so, no, it's solid. It's what do you mean? Yeah, the guy oh, no, I got a friend. I got out. a friend who can suck his own dick. He ain't got no rib cage. He's he a no comic. Ribs. No, no, no. He can suck his own dick. Really? Yeah, he said it uh, feels a lot more like sucking a dick than getting your dick sucked. He's a contortionist? No, he's just a comedian. <laughs> or a conformist. <laughs> He's conforming to dick sucking, I guess. Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. Wow. But He's we've like all tried it. it. We've I've all tried it. it. You've never, never tried, tried it. it. I never tried it. You've never been hard and you're just like, eh. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> never once. I want to see your goddamn comedian Dude. friend. I would like to see that trick. <laughs> Bro, he did it. Son, he did it with us That's... on an episode of uh, Ask Guy Code. Really? You don't remember him? No. He gave us something. his hit. name? No, but he showed that he could suck his own dick. Really? Matt Broussard. I never, I never bro, Matt Broussard, bro. That's better than twerking. If your jokes are bombing, nah. and you just start like, sucking your own dick. This. <laughs> <laughs> Good trick. <laughs> Whoa. You kill with that. You don't remember Matt? He was on Guy Code with us, and we did that Ask Guy Code. Remember, there was like a round table type of thing? I don't recall. Maybe you weren't on that episode. Did you ever try? Bro. Well, suck my own dick. But how, how can Every man has tried to suck their own dick. Bro. Yo, listen, bro. My shit better be all the way the fuck out here. That's the thing. Or you just flip it back. Or you go. Why yeah. you start screaming at your dick just now? Because I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? fuck? He, he thought it was a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, what the fuck is that? Yo, it's, I, I don't know. That's kind of wild. What? I ain't get blood. God ain't blessed me to want to have to suck my he own gave, dick. He, he, he put something here. I guess it's your rib cage to prevent mm -hmm. you from doing that kind Thank of shit. Thank God you did that. I appreciate God. you. I, we're probably more productive as a society. Men probably wouldn't. <laughs> Even nobody would probably you know work. how embarrassing that would be? It's embarrassing when your mom walks in on you jacking off. Can you imagine your mom or your dad walking in on you with you got your whole dick in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> your dad confused this shit. Like, is he gay? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, what the fuck? Or you just narcissistic. <laughs> this motherfucker got an ego, bro. <laughs> this guy's you got some balls, bro. Dick, bro. He's wilding. Now you can suck your own balls. Wow. Nah. What? Y'all um, get offended if y'all like. What'd you say, Taylor? Put your lips on the mic, Taylor. What'd yeah. you say? You, if your girl's sucking your dick, right? Yeah. Yes. And she and you come. Yeah. Are you kissing her afterwards? No. No. Why? Because the cum is there. Because the cum is there. It's yours. So what? What if my shit was in her mouth? I'm supposed to kiss her because it's my her. shit. That's different. You're not gonna tell, but you gonna kiss her. I give a little peck, yeah. Oh, come like on, this, bro. Like this. Like, real, uh, come on, bro. And, and I'm gonna tell you, like, yo, you be wild a little bit. Come you know on, that. yo. Now, listen, you like she gotta drink up. something. She gotta drink it's not it. It's not on her, her lips. lips. Yeah. It depends how well I'm Just coming that way. day. Get out the way. Just why can't you have a swig of water and get it why all out and rub your, your mouth? Come. Why are you so like? Yo, bro. Come all women. I don't kiss my girl after she eats cilantro. <laughs> well, onions. Well, onions. It's mad shit. I don't it's kiss my girl after good. she okay, eats. Her well, breast smells bad. I don't kiss her. I come. I'm a tongue her down. You're crazy. All no, women should see. attempt to kiss their man after uh, you give them head, <laughs> just to see, just see how much they love you, just, just to see, test them, just test his head movement. No, see if he's sucking somebody else's dick. <laughs> I'm gonna look like Tyson Fury. <laughs> that's what the hell is going on, man. <laughs> Take it that right hand. Boom. <laughs> you know, you know, a girl. I forgot who it was, but they said that after they 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 swallowed the guy nut and then they spit it back in his mouth. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's, yeah, exactly. Hell up. That Your man like you is sucking dick. That's how like you did that shit before, and you wanted to see if how, <laughs> yeah. how we gonna react to it. Like, like if, if instead that we were like, "Yo, that's just dope." We'd be like, "Ah, that was me." Yeah, <laughs> they call that shit a snowball. Right? That's a snowball. You know, you heard it too. Then never I'm, heard it. No. How you gonna say a snowball? You never heard it. I never. Heard this guy is so crazy. <laughs> so, what if you was around me? Help me out. All right, then you better say something. What happened? It was on a show, man. Somebody said they spit the shit back in the girl's mouth. First time I ever heard that from you. Horrible decisions, maybe. Somebody was nasty. It might have been one of them. All right? Yeah. 
<laughs> like, yeah. like I made it up. I never Yo, heard it. Wax's watch is so big. Have you seen this? <laughs> Did you take like that shit off the out. wall, son? <laughs> 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 this shit is massive, bro. <laughs> it's helping knock people out. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> you got flame. You got flame flames and taco in the room. Real. I feel like an Iron Man suit gonna come out of that shit. Hey man, Dude. I just want to tell y'all. Uh, we've been doing brand news. This is the three hundred what episode? During the fourth episode, uh, first episode we ever did a format. Mm. I think it went great. Yeah, it's right, right on time. Right, right on time for the next level. Ooh. Okay, all right. Ooh. Yeah. You got to do what we got to do. I don't know what that. Shall means. we get out of here? <laughs> yeah, we we done. So um, take us, bro. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. 